Welcome to, well, uh, perhaps the biggest Xbox news week in the history of, I don't know, since I've been covering everything. I'm one of your hosts of the Xbox 2 podcast, Randall Thor 19, the man with the million, and Jez Corden is not here. I guess we should all just uh, tweet out to Jez and say to him, you know what, you should go on vacation more, because normally when you do, well, things tend to happen. So, obviously, the show needs to go on, and I reached out to two of my best friends around here, and uh, they're, of course, more than willing to come on. We have the one, the only, Colt Eastwood, who is more than gameplay. What's going on, Colt Eastwood? (laughs) Uh, I mean, a lot's going on, and I feel honored to be hanging out with uh, you two gentlemen with lots to talk about when it was kind of quiet last week, so I'm glad to be here. Yeah, yeah, and... The one and only Lord Cognito of ILP and the Dukes. He's in the realm. Oh man, we have a lot to talk about because yesterday, what? What we talk on? You, I called you. You called me. We're we were on the phone discussing this for quite a little bit, huh? You know. Yeah, yeah. A lot, man, what a week, right? What what a turn of events in a short span. You know, we we had the call go down and just trying to analyze what's going on but first of all salute to you and xbox 2 and salute to jazz missing arguably the greatest week <laughs> in gaming history you know say but salute to him i can't wait to hear what he has to say but i appreciate the invite man always a pleasure to be here in the realm of the xbox 2 one of my favorite podcasts and of course cole east with the homie always a fun time me and cole and i was hung out a ton of times now in the last like two years it's kind of funny uh, i've actually seen him more than you ran Mm, that is true. Well, I mean, you, you, it's you, amazing. Yeah, but we got the break bread, Cog. You got to eat that, uh, that pizza. Bro. You know? You put me on the to the greatest. The Palermo's. Bro, you are a true Chicago native. Like, I would, if ever. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have known the greatness that is tavern style Chicago pizza. None of that lasagna, none of that, none that, of that. deep dish nonsense. We had the real Chicago pizza. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Oh, man. Uh, Space Dova commitment for 29 months says, Ran Cog and Colt, let's effing go. Happy Friday, gentlemen. Yeah. It was it was one of those things where it was like, I don't know. Like, I, I was like, okay, I knew Jazz was going to be gone. So I knew I needed people. And I was like, all right, well, you know, always, you know, Colt and Cog got my back. And I was like, ah, but it's like, what are we really going to talk about this week? And that was on Monday, right? Because it really, the last couple of weeks, hasn't been too much to talk about. Like, super interesting, other than Starfield. Right, which is you know an amazing game, a game that yeah. all three of us reviewed. Seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. <laughs> uh, that is cl- that is Metacritic was dropping, but then the Metacritic was rising. It's back up to an eighty-four. Mm-hmm. But uh, Microsoft seems very happy with that. And then out of nowhere, Monday night, I believe it was, mm-hmm. things started happening. All of a sudden, my phone starts blowing up. All of a sudden, I'm like looking at it. I'm like, wait, what's going on? I see these documents. And it's like, uh oh, like, wait, a new console, two new consoles, next gen oh. information plan, Bethesda game leak. I was like, what's going on here? And then it's been like mayhem ever since because you know a lot of narratives mm-hmm. form. You know how it is, Cog, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, Xbox. The the most recent one is most that fun. Xbox is going out of business. 2026, you know what? Sell your Xboxes now. Stop buying your games on the console. Switch to PlayStation or Nintendo because, gosh darn it, there's going to be no Xbox in 2026, 2027. Uh, Phil just can't do it. But then today, mm-hmm. Xbox is Monopoly again. <laughs> Xbox, <laughs> Xbox is Monopoly and is buying up the entire industry. So what is it? So is Xbox going out of business or is Xbox buying up the entire business and is going to be untouchable. I don't know. I don't know. Like the the dichotomy of like I guess you would call this bipolar. You know, mm. one they're leaving. Mm. I mean, do do you find all the narratives on on? Because I know I you know I know I know Colt. Mm. 
He he will say, he says he don't, but he loves the Twitter drama. Colt's all about that, you know. Especially when me, he teams me, up with me? the sauce with, with little Gaz. Me. Where's Gaz? I, I love I love to team up with Gaz, but you know, um, I do like to get into uh, some of the posts that our friends do and just kind of have a laugh with them. But what I don't like to do is just to outright hate on things like right out of the blue, but there is a lot of fun that kind of the elbow jabbing that goes on. And as long as you're not making uh, personal attacks, I think you're doing all right, but I don't know, pass judgment where you will, I suppose. And, uh, yeah. you're not doing so good, right? Cole, you're kind of under the weather a little bit from your vacation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do sound sexy, but yeah, I'm just, uh, Ooh. I'm slightly under the weather, but, uh, I'm really happy to be here. Like I, I could be, I could be laying, you know, half under the earth, like Xbox in 2026, <laughs> and I'd still be here. No, I, I think that's, uh, man, we got so much to say about that. We got tons of stuff to talk about. And uh, Cog, you guys did an emergency ILP on Tuesday. Is that like the first emergency ILP Ooh. that you guys have done? Yeah, I think so. I think so. It was just. We looked at how everything aligned, and you know, obviously, I give you guys the exclusive. You the homies, you know. So I tell them. So initially, we had, you know, Peter Moore's return, you know, because we had Peter Moore on last time. It was fantastic, just going through the Xbox mm-hmm. 360 era, going through the Dreamcast era, and then we. It was so many things we didn't get a chance to talk about last time, and other things he done. So we like, all right, we'll bring him back for a part two. So this is kind of like part two week for Iron Law Podcast and Peter Moore, and we're sitting there like, man, this news is so massive i'm like we this may be an eight hour ILP <laughs> between you know peter roy and then all the news and we just talked about it so we kind of just talked to the to the realm like hey we, how would you guys feel if we did like an emergency podcast and, and it just so happened to work out you know Saul was at work but he could jump in so the joke was because Saul was like had like a bad setup and he it sounded like he was on the run so the joke was like he leaked the documents <laughs> <laughs> so like King has this picture of Saul at the airport checking out like he's leaving for another country after <laughs> it was hilarious. But we did it, it was fun. And yeah, so this way we get a little bit more time with Peter. And then obviously as the week went on, now we even got more news which which we'll talk about, which is the CMA. But it's just a crazy, crazy week in gaming. And I've never seen anything like this. I know we'll get into it, but it's definitely unprecedented territory and it's just so much to talk about. There's so yeah. many ways to to break this thing down. There definitely is, but uh, before we get into all that, I got some housekeeping I need to take care of. You know, with with Jez yeah. gone, we we do have uh, you know the wonderful people at Patreon as well as some uh, sponsorships. So, I mean, this week the Xbox Two podcast is once again sponsored by Manscaped. So, for the sleekest version of yourself and to prevent space shoot space suit chaffing this is one that i think jez ended up writing and messed up <laughs> wait let me let me start this over you know jez usually does this stuff because he's really good at it right because there's this intro where he wrote are you preparing for a voyage to the stars do you want to avoid having personal hygiene issues while floating around in G- zero g then you need manscaped for a totally out of this world men's grooming system for the sleekest version of yourself and to prevent <laughs> space suit chaffing and messed up Manscaped has you covered from head to toe, starting with their brand new Beard Hedger Trimmer. With one guard and 20 adjustable lengths, this device is perfect travel companion, fit to take care of your mane wherever you are. Next in line, who can forget about their signature performance package 4.0? Included in this ultimate grooming bundle is the star of the show, the Lawnmower 4.0, equipped with skin safe space technology to minimize nicks and cuts in your sensitive areas. Once again, Manscaped, Manscaped supports the Xbox 2 so much, they provided an exclusive offer for our listeners where you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code XB2 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code XB2. Feel like yourself again and take charge of your life with Manscaped. So thank you very much for Manscaped for sponsoring this episode of the xbox 2 but we also have the wonderful people at patreon.com make sure if you guys you know if you the question thread is up jez did post that while he was on vacation so if you guys want your questions i know colts doesn't have a lot of time or he's sick so he might bounce out at some point and you know i can't have i can't ask lord cotton go to be here for three four hours so at some point <laughs> It'll probably be just me, and I'll get to the Patreon stuff. So if you guys have a question, make sure to put it in there. 
Uh, but we have some shout outs. We got Peter B, Saucy Maz, James Wiseau, Tricks Are for Trade, The Grandest of Bip, Chris Parnese, Devrica, Hey Blinken, Battered Haddock, Armored Dude 52C, Ryan Kipple, Foreign Object, Mythic Marty, Moronic Donkey 99, Makazilla, Randall Thor 19, Silas, Eric Gregory, Elijah Vasquez, Phil Spencer, and Jim Ryan in the Octagon, James Moore, Fantasticals, Halo is the franchise player, <laughs> Katriox, Bright Chandra 1, Justin <laughs> Duell, Frank Mariano, <laughs> PB Broking, Ace of T and Madison. Untidy Tim, Sorry. Grizzly Mofo OG, Governor Grimm, DZ Huffin, Wagerman, Achievement, The Scarecrow 121, Darren Tropy, Prof JJJ, Butterball 8, Ghostface Killer, and Wolf Kang KPZ. Thank you guys so much for supporting the Xbox 2. And um, we are working on getting Mr. Maddie Plays on for October, Ooh. as well as another guest, because we, did, we, we weren't able to have a guest this September because Maddie was so busy and Jez was yeah. on vacation for the last two weeks. So we're going to try to have two guests next month to kind of make up for that. So uh, yeah, we're going to get Maddie on at some point and then, and then somebody yeah. else. I'm sure there'll be a lot to talk about, you know. Cog, you, you did, you did Xbox 2 Plus. Well, you, you and Colt did Xbox 2 Plus when you were the first two guests. So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, we're going to have to get Maddie up in here, you know, and some yeah, other you gotta people. You got to get my fellow Duke up in here. Yeah. Yeah. We even had King. King was, King was one yes. of the guests. And you know, I don't have to listen to Addict berate me anymore and try to bully me to get on the show. So, because he was on the last one with Starfield. Yes. So yes, there's Addict. that. Now, all right. I figure we just need to dive right into it, but we do have yeah. some super chats that I got to get to because uh, Face BKNY, you know, Face Twenty Three BKNY. I know you know who that is, Cole. Yeah. Yeah. Cog. yeah. He up, he drops an incredible hundred dollar super chat. Oh wow. And says, remember when Red Dead 2 was native 4K on the One X? Will it be a bad look for the Xbox brand if the PS5 Pro comes out next year, GTA 6 comes out, and running 60 FPS on the PS5 Pro and 30 FPS on the Series X, since now we know Xbox is not doing a console? Colt, what do you think? You're the tech guy, Colt. I'm not really the tech guy. I mean... Granted, yeah, the, this isn't the, really a tech question, but is would that be a black eye for the Xbox brand? I mean, that would be totally different. I do want Xbox to do a mid-gen, and they're not. But uh, the difference was Sony advertised a 4K console with the PS4 Pro, and it didn't run. I think it ran half of 4K for Red Dead. But the Xbox One X came out a year later, not four or five years later. So that would be the big difference. Um That would be like if Xbox never had a mid-gen refresh, then it would be, you would say, oh, is that embarrassing for a four-year newer console to perform better than one that came out in 2020? No. Um, That would be, if you're an Xbox console fan, you should want to have bigger and better hardware, and I think they should do a mid-gen, but they won't. So uh, that's my answer. It's not the same thing. The Pro and the X were a year apart, and they both promised 4K. And one of them delivered on 80% of their games. And the PS4 Pro delivered on, I think, I don't know, Dealer and I used to do the numbers, like 10 to maybe 20% of the games actually ran at 4K. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it was, uh, it was a different promise back then. Would it, but would it be a problem if Grand Theft Auto 6 ran at 60 frames on the PS5 Pro but only 30 on Xbox? Would that be a significant problem or...? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, what you could ask Cog as well. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what we're going to see Rockstar do with the Rage Engine in 2024, 2025. I don't know what that's going to be. I don't know what they're pushing for with the <laughs> looking at some of the games that I think we're going to see more than just Xbox bring out games at 30 frames. Yeah, I can guarantee that because PlayStation has had such a luxury of making amazing games that are PS 4.5 titles that are incredible looking. Some of the best looking games that are based Mm -hmm. off of gen eight design criteria. Mm -hmm. So uh, like um, I I could go on and on because I think it's amazing that insomniac is making Spider-Man Two run with ray tracing on all the modes and they have two performance modes. That's awesome. And I would think that, if Xbox was taking something like Gears 5 from their old build and and making it into Gear 6, we would see the same type of thing. But um, once we start getting to these games that are fully next generation, next gen, gen 9 criteria like we're seeing with Forza Motorsport, then you're going to see a... Uh, 
what's going to be 30 and what won't be. Right. Ooh. Cock, how would you feel about that? I, 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 I have a feeling you, you wouldn't like it. I mean, I wouldn't like it. And it would certainly be, there'd be a lot of talk on Twitter. Because, like, you know, with, with, the, with the One X, Xbox fans talk their talk, right? Oh yeah, oh, you yeah, know, especially because sure. the PlayStation fans were talking their talk in in the b- the lead up of that because the PS4 was a more powerful system, resolution differences, mm-hmm. and the Xbox fans definitely were very vocal, and they were vocal with the lead up to the Series X when everybody thought mm-hmm. there was going to be uh, a big a bigger advantage than there actually has been with the Series X, and now mm-hmm. that we have Microsoft plans, granted, Phil Spencer did say they're not the real plans. You know, I don't know. Good, good. We'll talk about that, but he, we'll he, said, about that. he said they didn't have the real plans. You know, the, like, the real plans are somewhere else. These these are these are some fake plans. Yeah, um, these are not the year, plans you got last year's big tape. That's that's not the real. That's not the new album. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> Y'all leaked the big tape. <laughs> but but how would you feel if like all right we know okay maybe Xbox isn't doing an upgraded model PS5 uh-huh. Pro supposedly is coming. Uh, Tom Henderson who's been right on the money with a lot of these things dealing with PlayStation and, you know, Mm -hmm. GTA six, probably going to be the biggest game potentially to release this gen. If there was a significant difference of frame rate, uh, would that uh, bother Lord Cognito? No, look, y'all know Lord Cog is a a techie. You Mm -hmm. know, I love new hardware. I'm the guy that, that picks up the, the refreshes, even if they're, you know, not like a, even if it's like not like a huge substantial jump, I'll still pick it up just to have the latest and newest from whatever you know the console is. And yeah, there's a part of me that is a little disappointed that there won't be because of what we had with the Xbox One X and the Scorpio. And I remember the Digital Foundry com- you know comparisons from a third party standpoint, 4K and 60. We saw the differences and we were popping off. And the thing about this generation, though, I, I just feel like there's a there's a major difference because as I told you before, Rand, like. During that time when we were popping off with the third party comparisons, right, it was it was a good window and it felt good. But then, you know, as the gen continued on, you know, were we popping off when that Spider-Man came out? Right. Mm -hmm. Or when that God of War came out, that Last of Us came out. So to me, it always comes back down to the games. And I think not going to say the roles, excuse me, completely reversed, but. Xbox has the games now. Mm. So to me, I look at the first party lineup. I look at a a 2021. I look at a 2023 right now. And you have, you know, a Hi-Fi Rush. You have a a Starfield. You have a Forza. You have Minecraft Legends. You have Age of Empires, right? You have all these games. And then obviously Game Pass. And then obviously we're going to talk about CMA and all this other stuff. So to me, they are in a position that you can just flood with games. And when it's first party and exclusive to you, there's not going to be much of a comparison, right? It's going to be you you showcasing your game. So I think that's the difference here. And sadly, you know, from a tech standpoint, we have to be honest with the Series S being that secondary console, which we see it, we're getting some information on the splits. The more people are mm-hmm. having the Series S, it's it's another development developer challenge to say, okay, we're going to make a third SKU, right? And it's the, the Xbox XXX, triple X, right? You know what I'm saying? And then you got to have the, the middle skew that is what we have right now with the Series X. And then another one, to me, it's just too much. So I get it, even though selfishly the techie in me wants more power and I would always support that. I do understand they're in a different position this gen. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's about the games. And if we look at the roadmap, which we're going to talk about. It looks it looks really promising, man. And then you talk, you know, ABK in there, and you talk, it starts to get overwhelming with with volume. And to me, that that is what's most important. If these games are good, because look at what the last point I'll say. Look at what Starfield's doing right now. Mm, Ten million in basically two weeks. Exactly. It's very impressive. New IP so and it, everything. Yeah. Bro, so if Hellblade is game of the year contender, 90 style Ooh. Metacritic, if Avow is, you know, 90 Metacritic, oh. are we going to be caring about they got more frames on a third? Well, some people will. Some people some will. Some people well, will. So, okay, let me, right, I don't, I don't quote what's it, but let me hear it. Let me hear. Yeah, no, this is, no, this is perfect because, mm-hmm. you know, people won't expect this from me, and I've been saying this more and more, especially since um, just the power narrative is kind of, you wonder why the power narrative kind of went sideways, but w- where in the world does Xbox ever directly compete with PlayStation? They don't they don't worry about the console sales. They're selling a Series S for $300. They're not in a power fight with PlayStation at all. They already I suppose they whooped them last generation with the Xbox One X and they showed to their fans that they care about giving them what they want, but 
when Cog was talking about how it's really down to the games, Xbox is building a premier first party platform of great games on the Xbox ecosystem. And if the Xbox Series X isn't enough power for you, here's the horrible thing people don't want to hear. Uh oh. They they want you to go play on PC. They want you to play on your mom's crusty laptop. They want you to play on a middling PC that can run 60 frames at 1080p. They want you to do what they want you to play however you want. They want you to play on a TV. Yeah. People don't understand this. And if you continue to sit and wonder about how many console sales are there going to be, what's what what is the running of the console? What's the frame rate and the resolution? This generation, I played Gotham Knights, Redfall, and uh, <laughs> and uh, although I did like it at some at times, and Starfield on PC. I played a hundred hours of Starfield on my Xbox Series X. Freaking loved it. Did uh, a sponsored video and a review, and then once I was finished with the game, I played it on PC with Play Anywhere, and that is such a powerful device where I can go on my PC. It's like, oh, here's your save. Give us a second to fetch it, yep. and I can play it however want, you want. You know, the cool thing is my twenty five hundred dollar PC cog. Mm -hmm. It basically played Starfield at Xbox Series X settings at mm. double the frame rate, and it cost five times more than a Series X. Mm. So, at, I guess you could say, well, that's unfortunate. That Xbox, like, if you want more power, spend double because I think that's how it is with PC. Um, but it is. Cog set it up so well. It's not about console versus console. They are building all these games. They're bringing in ABK. They've got all these games that are pushing the envelope with Forza, where it looks like it doesn't even freaking look like a video game anymore. It looks like you're watching racing footage. And then you've got um, you've got Fable, which doesn't look cartoony anymore. And Hellblade looks like a freaking movie that no. you crap your pants when you're watching it. Like this is. This is what Xbox is building is great games to play in their ecosystem. And the, the word Xbox doesn't mean a console anymore. And it hasn't, I think, for over 10 years. Yeah. I mean, final point, I know we've beaten this thing to death, but, you know, at the Forza preview event, you know, one of the key marketing terms you go in there says no console required. Mm. Right. And, and you made mm -hmm. a fantastic point, Colt, because I'm um, during the you know review period of me playing Starfield and, and after I'm going for my ROG ally cloud saves you oh, know yes. playing it amazing starfield runs amazing on the ally right to my series s to my laptop which had like a 3070 or something at the time and the seamless transition from the cloud data and just continuing exactly where i was to me that's the future of gaming it, it's where you want to play at now i get it from a console standpoint guys want more power but again what yep. xbox is doing is that they're, they're eliminating the barrier where every if you're a pc guy you're good you know and ultimately more people are playing the game so i do think it's the right strategy there is always going to be a part of me like Rand that's going to be like man oh you know i want you know the new beefy you know what i'm saying because <laughs> of course i get it I, i'm i'm from that era Same. you know that kind of thing but i will take quality games over that anytime okay i mean that's a good answer it's a good answer mm -hmm. uh, that's why i love having you guys here because you guys are just you guys are just amazing you know and because because anybody else would have just been like a really surface level uh answer <laughs> but instead we there's get, no surface level there when is, you're you know, on xbox too well <laughs> Yeah, that's true. We yeah. have we have Greg in the super chat saying Jez goes on vacation and all hell breaks loose with Xbox. <laughs> yeah, he's probably he's probably sitting there checking his phone. He's supposed to be there with his girlfriend, you know, uh, on vacation for like a week and a half or whatever. First one he's he's done in I don't know how long, and like he's sitting there like checking his phone and making sure articles are being written on Windows Central. And then only that the CMA comes out and they're like we're pre-approving the deal. When Jez was out here eating hot chips. Because he didn't think things were going to go the way. You know how Jez was like reverse jinxing the whole thing, right? Yeah, I, yeah, love, I, I love his tweet today or yesterday yeah. where he said, I totally didn't uh, lose faith, which is really funny. You know, <laughs> yeah. he's having a good laugh about it. Behind this, you know, behind, yeah. trust me, behind the scenes, he was, he was losing the faith all the time. He was like, this deal's not getting done, blah, 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 blah. But it's, it sounds like it's close. Elijah Vasquez in the super chat. Nice to see the fellas back at it again. And of course, Jez is on vacation for the craziest week in Xbox history. Hope you guys have a great show. We also have Hindsight with Hustle saying, hello, everyone. Hope all is well. Hope you're doing well, Hustle. Uh, Jordan White says two things. 
After the great reception of the Battle Royale Racer F-099, how has no one mentioned Burnout 99 yet? Make that, and I'll play it forever. And also, do you think there'll be a native GeForce app, Now app on Xbox? I, I don't know. I, I don't know if there will be. I mean, it'd be, it'd be nice if there was. Um, but you know what? Let's, let's get to, let's get to the, the, the topic of the, of the day, right? I, I'll, I'll answer the, the rest of these super chats. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of have a little break a little bit later for them. But so I guess we need to talk about the leak. That's what everybody wants. Everyone is here for. It's what we need to discuss. I know you've talked about it, what, twice now, Cog? Talked about it once mm-hmm. in ILP. Talked about it with Maddie. Mm-hmm. Uh, although that episode is still Patreon exclusive until Sunday, right? Usually when you guys right. go live. Cold hasn't talked about it at all. Because mm-hmm. he hasn't had a show. He's kind of been MIA. Nobody even knew where Colt mm-hmm. was. You know, because mm-hmm. he was on vacation. I put out a video about it, talking about some of the stuff. Uh, but, I mean, there's like a whole bunch of things here. Because it's not just like... I mean, it's it's about the new consoles. It's about their next-gen plans. It's about the Bethesda roadmap. It's about... God, Phil wants Nintendo! How could he? Oh, my God. <laughs> that one cr- guy that said... Stop looking at Nintendo, you <laughs> greedy guy. Yeah, yeah, right. All the stuff with Nintendo, emails everywhere. Uh, you know, uh, Microsoft calling Baldur's Gate three a second run game, and everybody thinks that's like a like an insult towards Baldur's <laughs> Gate. When it's like, what? How's how second run an insult? Like if it, if it was second rate, sure. But you know, reading comprehension, understanding in the English language. Not a lot of people strong shoots on social media, especially when they're ones in the stables. You know what I mean? Words. Like, it's kind of like, what are words? What are words? You know, (laughs) when they're actually formed in in a sentence, they they sort of mean something. Like, words have meanings. You can't just say whatever you think or whatever is on Well, I mean, I could could run a whole two-hour show about how... People tell me that Starfield is an Xbox exclusive when Xbox literally officially calls it an Xbox exclusive. That's like, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that one, but I dealt with that for like months, oh, for yeah. years. It was well, great. yeah. I mean, you know, the whole Xbox is How is it exclusive when it's on PC? Well, I mean. How is it not exclusive when Xbox says Xbox exclusive? Yeah. I'll, 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 the reality is all that really means is it's not on PlayStation or Nintendo. Really, all it means is not on <laughs> not it. on PlayStation, right? Like, that's essentially, yeah, that's right. That's essentially what it means. I mean, means. that's literally what the word exclusive means, but whatever. Yeah, but people's, I can play it on my PC, Colt. You're such a liar and you're spreading misinformation all the time. Yeah, I think Why Phil Spencer for inventing voice? that PC. Because that's you know, this this the, 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 that voice, <laughs> the voice. That's what I like. I, I when I read the, those tweets, that's kind of like in my sounds. mind. In my mind, I'm like, you know, then, that's that's how they sound. And then right? there's the then there's the voicemail on Phil Spencer's phone. Phil said he was going to bring Starfield to PS5. <laughs> Y'all messy today, I see. <laughs> Y'all messy today. Hey, you know, I remember when 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 you told me there was going to be Petty Cog. You know, on yeah. Twitter, but we, didn't, on, we, we didn't get we didn't get a little bit of petty. No, no, I, I gave y'all petty for um, I, they took out well, they took the they, Metacritic they moment away it, from me. It. <laughs> so that's when y'all was gonna get it. But look, I still listen. My new thing is I, I just look at the 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 the, the player base. I look at what's the most played you know game on Xbox. Mm. I look at how much consoles are sold in UK because of um Starfield Game Pass engagement. And all I do is I just I just hum at them. I just. <laughs> That's all I do. I just look at you and I hum because because what it is the thing that disgusts me. My only thing, and I'm gonna be messy, is that regardless of what, even if you don't like a game, you don't like a platform. We celebrate the greatness of success. We celebrate a studio yeah. that had a ton of pressure under them, and everyone's saying if X, this thing game doesn't, so you know, deliver Xbox is in trouble. And you know, we we've done it before. Look, I'm not an Elden Ring guy. Y'all know I'm not a Souls guy, right? But mm-hmm. when I seen what Elden Ring was doing, and I seen the success and how it was transforming the genre, and people were going crazy, I celebrate. I'm like, yo. I'm not a Souls guy, but that is amazing. And what funny to me, Rand, is people can't even fix their mouth mm. to give success oh. to Starfield, to give success. And that's why it's like, it missed me with this, I just want Xbox to compete. No, you don't. Because mm-hmm. if you do, and there's a successful moment, you mm-hmm. celebrate it. Because that's what men and women do. So I, now I look at you, and I know it bothers you. It goes from $6 million, it goes to $10 million. And now I... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can't do nothing about it. You can't. Men lie, women lie. The numbers don't lie. Give it up. Be mature. 
Okay. I like that. I, I like that humming. Uh, it's, it's good. So we'll talk about, let's talk about the consoles, right? Let's talk, let's talk about the, the leak consoles. I guess we should also make mention right off the bat, right? And we'll, we'll probably read this afterwards. Phil said these aren't the real plans or whatever, right? We'll, we'll read a statement. New, new album, new album is yeah. coming. Also keep in mind that these slides are from May of last year. 2022 and i think they were submitted to the ftc in october or something so we are what september of 2023 um you know things could change year and a half you know yeah. it's it's always funny when you would you know i mentioned in my video is like you know ex youtubers out there will, will always use words like big massive ultimate right because like insane. we want you to, yeah we, insane we want you to click on the video and then it like leaks right and sometimes it's not really like leaks it's like well my uncle who works in nintendo told me this or you know like <laughs> it's like kind of like little little bits of information like oh jeff grubb said something he heard this or jez said this or whatever that kind of leaks but you never really get like you don't get this you don't get slides you don't get the presentation right so this was true when they made it in May 2022. It may not necessarily be 100% accurate in September of 2023, or, you know, things may have shuffled around, release dates, launch dates, things of that nature. So keep that in mind. But, I mean, hardware needs to be locked in in advance. So, like, I sort of feel like even if the dates shift on this, like the, this new Series X, digital version which is something that me and jezza talked about the week before special nick claimed he talked about it first but if you go listen to xbox 2 we were we were definitely put it out there um that uh, not to be petty though yeah not, not to, to be, be petty, well, you know you know how special nick is he he'll be like i, I know everything right and it's like oh, I, think, you know? I think he changes his handle on twitter to uh i'm a good guesser or something yeah he's like a that. good guesser he's a good guesser <laughs> uh -huh. so so keep that in mind things could change they might not change obviously so we have a, a code name brooklyn the xbox series x refresh now this is just like a slim model it's not going to have any performance upgrades so this is just like a new series x right but it does have some upgrades right so it's going to deliver 4k gen 9 console gaming with more internal storage faster wi-fi reduced power and a more immersive controller and a beautiful redesign elevates the all digital experience of the ecosystem and they call they they call it the most powerful xbox ever now adorably all digital <laughs> like i'm adorably. sorry adorably who comes up with this first off like obviously well, we adorably as, as, as how to describe like all digital system like adorable come on that ha who at Microsoft's marketing was like, well, we need we need some sort of adjective to describe the system or describe the uh, you know the the all digital nature of it, and decide and decided out of all the words to use, all of all the descriptions you could p possibly put in front of it, adorable. <laughs> it's the one I think they, they had they modern vintage use. gamer come up with that name. Uh, hh, hey, don't, don't don't you be talking smack about MVG. MVG is my, my dude. M MVG is amazing. He he was pretty upset about the digital oh, thing, yeah. but Well, yeah, cuz Yeah, I, I I would think that MVG would uh would come up with that, you know, just to, just to to spite it, I suppose. Yeah, he was pretty upset Marketing. about the digital thing, but it's, we it's, still do have a disk drive console if this goes through, but well, I don't know. That is a whole well, other discussion we? as well. Do we though, do Cole? We? I don't think do we, we do, go? bro. I don't think we do. Well, you were telling me that they would, because I, I, another reason why I wanted to be on the show is to dive into the leaks since I literally haven't since I got home from vacation and was recovering from being sick. But um, you said that they would stop producing the Series X with the disc slot in it. Once this thing comes into the market, correct? Yeah, there's yeah, there's another slide that. Let me see if I can get the other slide. There's another slide that basically says it has like their launch targets on it, and there's some like uh -huh. extra, there's some like extra writings, like extra sort of uh like a time. Let me see here. Um, let's see one, two, three. Is this it right so, here? So I, I think there is a brief discussion to be had about how destructive is it for the consoles to go forward and and stop supporting disc based media for games um or is the majority of the people thinking yeah we won't miss it i don't really miss my blu-rays i don't miss my cds really all that much or are, are 
or would we be insensitive to think that? What's the discussion on that, Cog? Yeah, it's, it's a big one. I, me and Maddie go at this all the time. You know, he's a big uh, physical guy. He runs a secondary channel called Retro Rebound. You know, and all look, right. I, yeah. yeah, and I'm a guy, you know, from a historical standpoint, yes, I do like the record and being able to have the ability to play something offline. But I'm also a techie. And, I, and to me, I always look at where we are in gaming as like an inflection point. And Xbox to me is always... Whether you like it or not, they've always kind of pushed the envelope forward as far as where the industry is going to go. I remember getting the OG Xbox, and this is during the era of dial-up, right? And they're like, hey, you know, mandatory hard drive in, in, in the console with an, a broadband connection. And, like, so few people had that. But think about how that pushed people into doing online gaming because of that, right? We had Peter Moore on. We're talking about the 360, you know ushering in the HD era. I remember getting, you know, that 1080i TV, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 720, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I remember it because that's where it's going. And the same thing is, I just look at it like, like how, think about us from the blockbuster era, right? Bro, we got to go get that tape. We got to go to those discs or Gamefly, right? Oh, yeah. It just eventually goes away. Are we still doing those things? So I know what it is for gamers. It is a scary thing for a lot of people. But the reality is if the industry is going that way, the people are now going to forward think. So I think that's what it is. It's always I've always felt if you're on the Xbox ecosystem, you're set up to be in a digital, all digital kind of ecosystem. And just the existence of Game Pass, because as much as people, everyone loves it, right? And the fact that yeah. the Series S exists all digital, I already knew that's the transition point. If you're in this ecosystem, that's what's going to be the key. Now, the thing is always going to be, you know, back with compatibility, game preservation, and the fear of these things come off a marketplace. I totally understand, and those are valid points, you know? But at yeah. the end of the day, this is where gaming's going. And the last point I'll say, even with, remember, even when Xbox was a little bit too early with TV, TV, yeah. but look at the number one things now. Oh, we sit here raving about Last of Us. We out, you know, TV season on HBO. We're raving about Edge Runners. We're raving about all this multimedia into gaming when at the time, even the all digital future, right? I remember a time when people were like, you know, oh man, I don't, I don't know about that. You know, I want the disc. But now look at it. There's games. Some of these games, there's nothing in there but a digital code, right? There's no, there's no disc. And the fact that you could yeah. be at your house. Think about the day of the midnight launch when you used to go, oh, we got to get up. We got to go and stand online at GameStop. When the ability came to me that I could be in my house and pre-download. Mm. At 9 p.m.? Bro, yeah. I'm like, yo, I love y'all, but I'm staying in my house. <laughs> I don't need to see y'all at GameStop with a whole bunch of other dudes. I'm sorry. Like, I... It, I'm always going to be on the side of where technology is going. And I think they are ahead. Now, the argument is whether they're too fast, uh, too much ahead, that, that's fair. But I always think that's what it is. But go ahead, Cole. I, I knew he was going to jump in. No, no. Uh, I think that's perfect because I think there's, there's probably two different types of physical media people um, when it comes to music, movies, or games. And there's the collectors that like to have them stacked on their bookshelves. And I don't like that, but... I totally respect that. I think that's so cool. And I see people with that in their backdrops, if they run shows or they do videos. And when you put another case in the, in the shelf, it's a great thing. And like, this is my collection. And then I feel like there's the other kind of physical games person. And they're the, uh, the do what do you call them? The doomsday gamers. Okay. Uh, and I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to try not to be insensitive when I say this, because I don't really fully mean it, but I feel like, they're collecting their games on disc just in case all hell breaks loose right. and they can't have access to internet, you know, right. during, um, not during the apocalypse, but like, you know, when, the, when things aren't working right, I can always have my disc. Well, right. Xbox doesn't really let you do that all the time, but I feel like they sort of think if the world goes to hell in a handbasket and we don't have uh, internet, I'll still be able to play any game I want from the Nintendo, from the mm -hmm. NES, Mm -hmm. All the way up until uh, Cyberpunk 2077, but they're gonna re they're gonna realize that while they're in that problem, there's no electricity. Um, their people are using their <laughs> their bottle caps as money. I don't know. I just wonder when Cog says the world is moving a certain way. It's I can't just say circular discs or cartridges. Like if you look throughout, if you were born in the 80s or the 90s, you've watched the world move beyond different types of mediums or different 
types of materials between print and cameras and you name it. Like, who was it that um, our great friend Albert Pinello told me? He's like, Colt, you can't get in the way of of technology. You need to move aside and let it advance. You can't just stay in one place and say, this is what I love. This is how I like things. You have to move out of the way a little bit and let things grow and get better. And I feel like maybe, maybe, and I feel bad saying this because I want preservation to be fully intact, but maybe that limitation of a disc will eventually be there because as people have said in the chat, not all games fit on discs, but I think I would bet you almost all games fit on those a dual layer Blu-ray discs. I don't know, Rand. I want to hear your take on well, this. Well, I mean, we like I, I understand people who enjoy physical discs and they want that security, they want that ownership, and they see Xbox and that is like a mostly all digital system. I mean, how one of the consoles is doesn't have a disc drive, right? And we've seen the the splits be talked about. Right, IGN ran some story because of a a leak from earlier, like last year, where it was like 75% Series S, 25% uh, uh, Series X. And that got people, like, that got people talking. But then it actually came out from Matt Piscatella and MPD and, like, Z Huge that the actual split is more 51-48, I think, in favor of the Series S. But basically, Mm -hmm. in the past year or so, uh, like, the Series S built up its lead because the Series X was really supply constrained for whatever reasons. I don't know why mm-hmm. it was, but it was. But Series X has been more readily available, and because of that, it's now more 50-50. And Christopher Dring always talks about when he does the UK charts that the PlayStation guys loves to always be like, oh my god, nobody's buying physical on Xbox. So you get because like most of the people on Xbox are all digital, right? They're, they're right. completely all digital. I transitioned all digital. My last physical game I bought was Titanfall. Uh, at the yeah. midnight launch in 2015. I've not had yeah. a physical disc Whoa. since then. And I don't need Same. physical. Like, I'm completely all digital. So, like, having yeah. an all digital system is perfectly fine to me. Like, I get it. it it's like, because that's what I would want. But, like, I understand the idea of options. And, like, the disc drive yeah. doesn't really cost more. It's not like we're talking about a $100 difference here. It's It's basically like a $20 component. Right, mm-hmm. so like, it, yeah, yeah, less than that for Xbox, yeah. Right, mm-hmm. so it, it would be pointing Microsoft down this path of like, hey, we're not offering disc drives, period. Because if they're if they're going, because looking at this launch timeline, right, they say here Starkville EOL, which is end of life, is ahead of Brooklyn launch. <laughs> now, I in my video I said, well, wasn't the Series X code name Anaconda? Which it was, but maybe there's like a different version of the Series X. But but the, here it says Starkville End of Life at a Brooklyn launch. I'm assuming that's whatever current version of the Series X is out now, which would imply that once Brooklyn comes out without its disk drive, that there would be no Series X with a disk drive available because it would be discontinued. And if you're really going into this generation, 2024, with two consoles without any digital with, without any physical disk drives in any of them, you can probably think about the next gen in 2028 and be like, well, if they're already all digital now, then there's no reason to offer physical discs four years later. And I can understand mm-hmm. people who enjoy buying physical discs might abandon the Xbox platform because, well, there's obviously no way to to like continue doing that, right? So, I, I mean, it's an interesting thing. I know a lot of people... The, the, the other thing was a lot of people and mentioned how they wanted a digital Series X. It's like, oh, I would, I want the digital Series X, and yeah. here it is. And even with the whole game preservation thing comes up, and it's like, oh, but like nobody talks about PC and how PC is completely all digital. It's always like game preservation, <laughs> but when it comes to the consoles in some way, but not to like the PC, which basically has all the games. Right, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's mm-hmm. it's kind of a weird argument, but so yeah, we, so you have Brooklyn all digital. It's an all digital console, adorably at that. Um, <laughs> it has it has an extra terabyte of space, so more internal storage. It's got two terabytes. It has a USB C front port with power delivery. Um, it's coming out at the same price, four ninety nine, and when the, under the thing of updated tech, it has an all new South Bridge to modernize the I O and sustainability efforts. It's got Wi-Fi 6E, uh, yeah. radio for better throughput, latency, and interference mitigation. And it's got a 6 nanometer die string for improved efficiency, and it reduces the power by 15%, blah, 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 blah. 
Um, Cold, is this something that you're interested in? Like, I know you have the Series X. I know Cog has a Series X. Is this something that you're looking at, knowing potentially it might be coming out next year, that you would want to pick this up for the same price that the Series uh, X launched no with in 2020? Normally, I would jump off and just say, yeah, I like to get anything that's new, but this doesn't offer a lot that I don't already have and, and talk where we just talked about physical media. And then you talk about having a, a premier wireless uh, Wi-Fi protocol when it's still better to this day to have an ethernet cable plugged into your, to your yes. console. Yes. Um, which is, it's funny because uh, when I say that, I sound like an absolute clown that I'm like, no, 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 I want that. I want that, you know, circa 1998 <laughs> wire still stuck in my, my series X. Um, the cat five, cat six, <laughs> yeah. The cat five. Yeah. I have a cat five cable there and I'm getting, you know, 500, uh, megs down. But anyway, mm -hmm. it's, um, I, I kind of want it because maybe I will because it'll look new and, mm -hmm. I've I've run the wheels off of this Series X. Yeah. I mean, I've I, I'm not surprised the thing uh, hasn't melted in half. I've been playing it so much since I got it, and I think I've played this thing more than I even played the uh, Xbox One X. So, um, yeah, but people yeah, people are accusing you of, of 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 leaving your games pause so you can just rack up time. You know? Oh yeah, and that was Yo. that, that was so weird that people are saying <laughs> that about Starfield. You How know, do you only have two hundred gamer score nine days in Starfield? You running that pause? really sucked. That yeah. really sucked to play that game for ninety plus hours yeah. and not pop a single achievement. achievement. Like, I know. if you're on Xbox. I mean, I can say this without batting an eye. Like, when that achievement animation pops up oh. in your selected color, which is me, which is, like, in the, the sky blue color. Mine's when blue. That anima yeah. And as a graphic designer, that spinning icon, the way it comes out, just a clean logo. Of that And that sound, like, it is such a serotonin pump. Yeah. And to play, like, one of my favorite games of the year and not get to pop achievements during that moment when... Uh, I was well, I was first discovering Starfield. That really sucks. Anyway, I'm sorry. Yes, I probably will buy the uh, the Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> and you can you can you can give it you can give the upgrade Series X to uh to, yes. to your son. You can yeah, upgrade I'll, him from I'll the give, Series I'll S. Give Lincoln my I'll give Lincoln my Series X. Um, Xbox sent me the wrap, the Starfield wrap, mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah, I was like, ah, uh, that's that's kind of a lot for a wrap. And gosh, dang, does that thing look so good in person? Yeah. I've, I've got on. You have it? Did you? Uh, Check it out, Cog. Yeah, I've seen that. diaper. Yeah, <laughs> the diaper. <laughs> the, the, the Xbox diaper. Yeah. Yeah, it looks nice, man. It looks nice. It yeah. is nice. Yeah. What about you, Cog? Are you gonna get yeah. the Brooklyn? Yeah, look, man, I'm from New York. I gotta get the Brooklyn. Come on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> look, it's one of those things that I get it. But, but, I, I gotta help Rand through right now. Man. He's going through it right now. Man, oh, I, I, what? I gotta help my boy Rand out though. He's going what through do you got? it. He, he, listen, he, he wants the Scorpio. He wants the little vid Vidoc that says, it eats monsters. The it monster eats that <laughs> eats monsters. Yeah, yeah. And what, this is how I look at it. I look at it like before this leak. And let, let me just put a disclaimer out there before we get into all of this, because I, didn't, I wanted to say this earlier, is that I really feel bad for the teams. Mm -hmm. Like this is one of the, listen, as a content creator, you know I like a little inside baseball just like the next man, right? And we, we're so used to, okay, well, you know, a couple months, this is coming, that kind of thing is coming. And that, that, that's fine to me, right? But, like, when your entire roadmap is leaked for, like, the next four or five years, the next, you know, what you plan and envision for the future of console gaming, that bothers me. Because at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff that we're about to see ha doesn't have the proper context. And that saddens me that we didn't get the reveal could you imagine getting the reveal of not thinking you're getting any console and then we're at you know summer game fest cult and we're in you know on the mm -hmm. crowd with and it's like yo boom they're doing a console wow no one saw this it kind of remind me of the series s um the, the one terabyte one you know what i mean like no yeah. one knew that was coming we're like oh wow that that's crazy so i, I just i feel for them as they lost the element of surprise and let's be honest now your competitor get to see what you what you're doing so i just wanted to say that you know, from the beginning, because I feel for the teams and not being able to have that moment. Now, selfishly, Rand, the content creator in me, right, is like, oh, what are we doing here? So back on point, what, what I was saying with you is that to me, I'm still 
surprised that they are actually doing something because the rumors prior to this point was that PS5 Pro was coming in this window. Microsoft has been on record. Phil has been on record that they were staying pat. Right. So I didn't yeah. expect this. This is something like, oh, OK, like you guys doing a re- redesign, you know, shout out. That's why I feel for, you know, Jason Ronald, and the team, all these guys, they, they're working on all yeah. these things. So and then the other thing is, I don't know if we, we if I'm jumping too far ahead, Rand, is the controller. Right. And yeah, that was... to me, the controller is the key to all of this and the future vision. Right. The ex- direct to cloud 5.2. Bluetooth or like haptic that we've always wanted and the accelerometer and all these things. So it's like, to me, that is part of the vision of you take this controller and it doesn't matter what screen you're on or what's going on, right? That to me is even more future proof as far as where it's going. The system, hey, this is a cute little refresh, adorable. That's what's the word we use it. Adorably. <laughs> it's a, mm-hmm. Adorable little refresh. Okay, cool. Some people buy the techie in me, I will buy it. But um, I really look at it as that control. It really says a lot to me of where they're going. And I'm, I'm very interested in the fact that they still were able to say, we are going to give you some hardware next year. Yeah, it's not going to be a more powerful Xbox Series X, but we're still going to give you something. And then look at what we're doing. I, and I honestly want to see the implementation of this controller into the games. You know, I want to know how they do mm-hmm. it because these are things that we've always kind of complained and, and wanted from that. And, and let's be honest, PlayStation has had that advantage when you you pick up, uh, what is it, Astrobot and mm-hmm. all oh, that stuff. It's amazing. Bro, it, it, it was the perfect controller to showcase the newer features of the system. And I want to see how games implement that. So that's just where I'm at. You know, I, trust me, the techie wants the power, but I'm at the, at the end of the day, I'm all about right now the great games, great quality games, keep the momentum over Starfield, keep the momentum with your first party lineup, and now implement these new things in these cool ways, and let's see how it goes. Yeah. Well, how, Go Grant, how, uh, how sure are we, or experts or leakers, that the PS5 Pro is coming? I, mean, I, I had heard at one point. Tom Henderson been on I mean, Tom Henderson hasn't missed yet, yes. so. Oh, well, yeah, granted, yes, I mean, yeah. like, the Slim, PS5 Slim's not out yet, and he was the one talking about the Slim and how it would have, sure. like, a... Uh, a detachable hard drive, which mm-hmm. we've seen pictures of it, but I mean, it is September 22nd. Oh, Maybe it's supposed to be launching in October, but I mean, I believe him that he has a really good source. So uh-huh. I-, I think the PS5 Pro is a reality, but like when you, when you talk about like, just r- the last thing I want to say about the Series X Brooklyn is the, well, there's the, like the image they use is a cylinder, right? Like think of a humidifier, Think of like a home speaker, like a circular home speaker. Think of a trash yeah. can. Think of Xbox trash can. It's like oh, a, you know, yeah, they've already of, done that. You know, they've already made that. that meme. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like it looks. So I don't know if that's like the final design of what it would be. Um, I, I, I'm not. I'm not surprised at all that they're doing a refresh because they do slims and sort of things every single generation, right, to save money. Mm-hmm. It's just interesting to me that you can like four years into the gen, you're offering the refresh. At the same price as the console that you bought in 2020, Ooh. right? And the only real improvements are going to be an extra terabyte of storage, which, you know, mm-hmm. that's nothing to sneeze at. But, you know, it's like, okay. Um, as well as like, hey, they say they have improved like IO and these sort of things, right? Yeah. So it's like they're definitely price conscious. As you've seen, like there was in the, the emails that the Xbox had to take a $1.5 billion dollar subsidy to kind of like get these consoles out there and, and some of the stuff, but um, you mentioned the controller. Now, when me and you talked, I, I was kind of like, the controller was the thing outside of the games, which we'll get to, the Bethesda leak, right? Because the, it's all, it's at the end of the day, it's all about the games. Like, for me, right? It, it, you know, like, the hardware can be important to speculate about, even though there's no speculation anymore because we, we sort of know everything, unless, of course, like, these are the uh, the remix plans, right? Mm-hmm. But the controllers, it's, it's interesting because, and I'll just say, if you guys are enjoying the show, make sure you please hit the like button and hit that sub button. We're less than 300 subs away from 100,000. So, I mean, that's, 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 like, pretty, that's, that's pretty close up. that I can taste it, but... Let's go. Um, so we have the Series X Brooklyn. We also have the, the new controller that's going to come with it that they're also going to sell separately. And then the mock-up is kind of two-tone, right? It's it's white on top, black uh, on, on the handles. But the thing about it is the big thing 
is it's that good. it has haptics yes. in the handles, right? One of the things that uh, when you talk about the Xbox versus PlayStation next gen was the controller differences where Xbox that people said, oh, well, Xbox really didn't innovate with the controller, even though they let you use all your previous controllers that you had bought during the Xbox One gen would be forward compatible and work with the system. PlayStation is like, uh-uh, we ain't doing that. We got a brand new, co- we got brand new controller. You're buying these new controllers, right? We got haptics. We got adaptive triggers and stuff. You're, you're doing that. And Xbox looked at it and was like, maybe we can take from that. And people really seem to like it. So with this refresh stuff, they're also launching a new controller called Sybil, at least that's the code name, that um, has precision haptic feedback. It's also got an accelerometer. They say it has quieter buttons and thumbsticks, and it's got new modular thumbsticks for improved longevi- longevity and continued uh, build improvements. I told to- Colt-, Colt last night that it has lift awake. Because you know, if which you- I think is, which I think is very, very cool. And at first, you may think, "Oh, great," but if you pick up your controller, if you go eat lunch and come back and pick up your controller, it powers itself on and resumes your playing. Like that can make your experience feel like you have a living, breathing console. Like you pick it up, you don't have to hold the button, even though it's. I don't know when you and I were talking about it, like. I said, it's nothing to hold the button to power on your controller, but if you pick it up off the couch and it wakes up and yeah. it's ready to go, like it just feels like you're connected to your system in a cool way mm-hmm. without really um, doing any crazy tech. I don't know. Yeah. Just, just how I thought of it. I, I, you know, I love that lift to wake aspect. I think that that's highly underrated. And again, I just, I just think about it from you taking this this controller on any device, whether it be a screen, PC, or what have mm-hmm. you, to me, they're making that barrier of entry lessened. And um, But I'm with I think that the haptics are huge, man. I really do. I, I love that aspect. See, see, we're doing it. What is it? The rechargeable, swappable battery? Yeah, yeah. They got rechargeable and swappable. So I guess Ooh. they're ditching the double A's and going to Ooh. rechargeable oh, wait, batteries. Oh, well, you Ooh. didn't explain this to me. So there is a battery pack in it that you can pop in and out? I mean, it says do good, feel good for sustainability, and it says rechargeable and swappable battery. So I assume okay. that means it's it's not it's going to come with the rechargeable battery like the PlayStation has, but like unlike the PlayStation, you'll be able to swap it out. I guess you know. Yeah, yeah it'll have it'll still have the battery door, the battery because well, the front ish. of because the front of the two consoles, Elwood and Brooklyn, we haven't talked about Elwood, comes mm-hmm. with the USB C fast charger for your controller. Yeah. Uh, so you, you can you can charge your your controller. So yeah, rechargeable battery. Um, it comes with Xbox Wireless too. But this thing called Direct to Cloud, Cog. Mm. You know, you talked about the Forza event. Mm-hmm. The big thing being no console needed. And even in some mm-hmm. of these slides, they talk mm-hmm. about how the controller is the hero. Yes. Because all you need right. is the controller, right? Mm-hmm. You know, whether you're playing on PC or whether you're playing on console or whether you're playing on streaming to your TV or any of your device, it's all just about the controller. Yeah. So what yeah, do you, what do you, is the direct to cloud thing kind of like that Stadia tech, you know, well, all you really needed was a Stadia controller and kind of just. What you... Yeah, I think this is, this is the extension of a little bit of that vision. Obviously we'll, we'll get into, you know, the future, future vision, you know, as far as hybrid and stuff, but. I think this is this is part of it. This is again, if see the thing we had to think here, and I, I know a lot of people to hear we hear cloud and immediately the nose goes up. You start thinking crack down three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I oh, get boy. it. I, I get it. You know, and, and again, all I try to tell people is you're talking right now to twenty twenty three car, right? I don't know what 2028 is going to be. I don't know the advancements and proof of concept that we would maybe make some type of breakthrough, right? And leap at that time, whether it be infrastructure or technology. So to me, this is them future proofing their devices so that wherever they have that future vision to get there and there is a, a jump and there is some type of breakthrough, they're ready, right? So that's how I got to look at it. To me, I look at Brooklyn and I look at, the control to me, the controller says a lot because correct me if I'm wrong. Um, cloud, I mean, Colt, with um, was it Bluetooth 5 ever in the controller before, or wasn't it proprietary? Like, uh, um, I think it's I think it's Wi Fi Direct that the controller uses, it doesn't right. use Bluetooth. I don't think right. there's right, is there so, not Bluetooth at all in the Xbox that's and my the series consoles? That's my yeah. and to see Bluetooth in there, right? To me, again. Now, 
breaking barriers down. They're giving all these, in my they, opinion, correct me if I'm wrong, if they're giving more options as far as connectivity, but continue. Kill. I think they do. I've often wondered the same thing. Like your mm -hmm. Xbox is all about Windows PC and, and back and forth between console, but they don't allow Bluetooth on the Xbox, which, you know, Bluetooth mouse and keyboard or Bluetooth headsets or Bluetooth mics or whatever cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there aren't cameras. But anyway, the Bluetooth connectability is not there. I think that Xbox is really stringent about, maybe Rand might know, they don't want to use Bluetooth for headsets because of the sound quality over Xbox Live, I have no Ooh, idea why yeah. Bluetooth is not a thing. Uh, Javier in the chat saying there is Bluetooth okay. on the Series X, but um, but I think he uses Wi-Fi Direct to sync. Well, not this Bluetooth. this new controller does say it has Bluetooth 5.2. So I mean, the old the last model of Xbox controllers on the Xbox One generation, uh, Randall, remember? I think it's once it got the headphone jack in it. Yeah. That moving forward, which probably would be 2016 and on, I'll, I'll just, right. I'm, I'm pretty close. 2016 right. and on, the Xbox controllers have had Bluetooth. And right. once you got into old. xCloud, right. you could sync a controller to your phone uh, when xCloud was a brand new thing. So right. um, I, I may be talking about the other half of it, but I don't know what they're doing in the console. Exactly. Yeah, the console is, I think, maybe where the discrepancy is, was probably what I'm thinking. When you, you know, you hold that sync button, I don't remember that being Bluetooth. But again, I could be incorrect with that. But at the end of the day, again, when I look at that Play Anywhere, Xbox Wireless 2, Direct to Cloud, Bluetooth 5.2, that to me is them eliminating barriers of entry to where you're going to sync and, and include cloud, include other devices, other screens, that kind of thing. And that's part of what I see as their future vision. So. Yeah, Here, here's the answer. Uh, the Series X does not natively support Bluetooth. It uses Xbox wireless protocol. Right. Yeah, right. That's why. That's so. probably why, like, the the controllers that most, like, third-party controllers you get for Xbox are wired. Because Xbox doesn't oh. allow them to get to the wireless their wireless protocol. Like, there's some, like, Razer that... I don't know, but like when you look at like Turtle Beach's controllers, they're all wired. Yeah. I know, I know Razer has done an actual like regular controller, but Xbox doesn't allow a lot of the companies to do their wireless protocol, which is why they have to be wired. Right. I don't, I don't know the reason for it, look, but that's that's not it. to interrupt you, Ray. I'm sorry because if you if you go back to the Brooklyn slide, is it where underneath Wi-Fi six? Isn't that BT Bluetooth now yeah. five point two radio in the console for improved radio for improved? Things? Yeah, even 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 the new that's Elwood. Cool. Right, because yeah. the other thing here is this Elwood Xbox Series S refresh, which just like the Series X one, Brooklyn has more internal storage, faster Wi-Fi, reduced power, and a more you know, and the controller. So this one comes with one terabyte, uh, same price, two ninety nine, uh, the same South Bridge to modernize the Wi-Fi six E, the you know, Bluetooth five point two. Um, the question I have is, then what was, <laughs> so what was the console that just came out? Like, cause the, the, I was talking to someone who's like, okay, so looking at the timeline for launch timelines for this, right? You mm -hmm. have, uh, they even have like when this stuff is going to be announced, you have the new controller being announced, uh, fiscal year, 2024 quarter four, uh, right before June. And then the mid gen console announcements, Elwood and Brooklyn are announced simultaneously, obviously at the Xbox showcase. Mm -hmm. And then they have here Elwood one terabyte launch two ninety nine. End of August, early September. Brooklyn two terabyte launch four ninety nine. End of October, early November, with additional storage options announced. Available in fiscal year twenty five, the second half. So they're going to have more, means, you know, storage. That means five fifty because they've changed prices since that graphic was implemented. Well, no, four ninety nine. Well, yeah. it, it means that there's going to be more storage. You know how they it was Seagate for a long time, yeah. then it was Western Digital. And they had like five, twelve, one terabyte, two terabyte drives for storage expansion. No, I'm just, I, when you were saying the four hundred ninety nine dollars, I would assume that they're if they were going to keep that plan, they would jump that up to five fifty since they've done the price increases on everything. Uh, just to set, just as an aside, maybe. I don't know. I think like that would be here if that was the case. If anything, I see this going down, not up. Especially if rumor has it a PS five Pro is going to launch. At the same price, oh. at the same we time. Talk about that. So it's like the PS5 Pro Pro comes in with way improved specs for the same price as the Series X refresh. 
I don't know if those would be very good on the market together. So, like, maybe the price goes down for this. I don't know. Uh, obviously, plans can change. Um, mm-hmm. but- now, to go to go back to um, phrase, phrase two, 23 BKNY when he said, would it be bad for this or that? Like, would it be bad if in 2024 Xbox drops a $500 console that has, you know, 25% <laughs> less power? Than than PS5 Pro for the same price. Yes, that's not a good thing. So yes. when I said 550, uh, I wasn't thinking about that because Xbox cannot sell that thing. Because the PS5 Pro would be the 550. It would be the new price hike mark in the global market. And um, Xbox can't. It still doesn't even seem fair <laughs> to sell a $500 Xbox to people that has the same performance of a 2020 console. I so, 100% agree. And that's where I think that would be an L. That's, yep. that's my problem. If, if, if the rumors are true, right, and the PS5 Pro comes in at a $500 price point, you cannot launch a basically a Series X Slim for $500 at the same price when you're getting outperformed. I think that would have to be adjusted. That, that to me, is where they get in trouble. Now, mm-hmm. if they internally know that PS5 Pro is not going to be 500 and they say it's going to be six or whatever, you know, then they can hold, you know, they can kind of stand pat. But I do agree with you, Cole, completely. Like, I, I think that's where the vision of this crumbles. You cannot have this at the same price as the PS5 Pro. Yeah. Yeah, that would definitely be, it, that'd be an oops moment. But there's some other interesting things here. Because Microsoft had this graph about things that were funded and things that they were thinking about. And one of the things that they talked about uh, that they wanted to do was Xbox Design Lab for consoles. Is I mean, that seems like the next logical step was like, hey, we had the, we had the controllers uh, and you can design your own. And then we had the Elite controllers and you can design your own. And even here, things that are funded. So these are the things that are funded. Um, obviously, as of May of last last year, you have the Cloud Console Keystones funded, Gen 10 Investigations, which we'll talk about, funded. The mid-gen consoles, Elwood and Brooklyn, are funded. The wireless headset 1.5 COS Parkview is funded. The new core controller, Sybil, is funded. The uh, SW Security, Qualcomm, Dawn Module, I have no idea what that is, that's funded. And the Xbox Design Lab and special edition and limited editions for the mid-gen controller, Igrain, is funded. So you're going to have the new controller, and then you'll be able to use Design Lab to change and you know customize the new controller. Now, things that are not currently funded or resur- resourced are a new Elite controller, a new luxur- Luxury controller... Which take your guess at what that could be? Maybe oh, one with sure. like a like a touchscreen or something. There was rumors about that. Console customization via Xbox Design Lab, PC accessories, accessibility portfolio, a new cloud server blade, repairability, sustainability progress, which I think maybe has been funded because they do have that re- like re- mm-hmm. you can repair your own stuff now. So I think maybe yeah. this has been funded in in the time that you know it's been over a year. And audio portfolio expansion. Now, at the top of this pyramid is things not in scope for first party. And it's earbuds, a media remote, a mobile controller, and a handheld cog. Ooh. Doesn't, see, doesn't sound like a handheld is uh, Microsoft will be making one. At least according to this, as of May of last year, that a handheld is not in scope for first party. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is something I've been... I'm trying to tell my hand, my ex bros, my ex boy bros, you know, I know they want it, but it, it never made sense to me. It, it just, again, the additional skew, you're telling developers, and let's be honest, you know, there is some, as much as I've got confirmation that, you know, a lot of these things like split screen and stuff can be done on the Series S for multiple developers outside of Microsoft, you know, we have to be honest that, yes, developing for two SKUs. And, you know, st- different studios with smaller resources, you know, developing on the S sometimes is going to be a challenge for them. They got to you know, work a little harder to get things to happen. So now you're telling these studios to now develop for another SKU, right, which would be a handheld that is speci- that's very different. 
can't see it. And, and and again, me going to the you know the Aces Rock um Ally event and seeing Microsoft there in full support with AMD told me everything I needed to know, which is they are going to put their you know resources and help out whoever wins the the handheld race and associate themselves with either native Game Pass or what have you. So that to me is the smart play. I, it's like. And you know I like VR. It's like the same thing with VR. It's like it doesn't make sense. Focus on the games and what you do well in this current strategy and it's, 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 instead of like, you know, mucking up the market with all these different things. I just think it's not part of the vision. So, yeah, I, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I know, you know, Jez, I think Maddie especially, like he, he they want it. They really want it. And look, we all know how cool it would be with an Xbox-specific handheld i'm a handheld guy but i just i just don't see it as part of this current vision right well i I think we need to get rid of the whole uh mindset of where developers have to make a bespoke specific version for a console and it's what it is what has hindered development for so long if you load up starfield on the rog ally cog does the rog ally say all right, here's the settings uh or uh, when you load it up uh, for the first time does the rog ally set it up like no. start it out based off your hardware, like, okay, we're going to set it at this resolution. These are the settings based off the hardware we're detecting. And then you just go because what the developers do when they make a console version is they say, all right, here's the hardware target. We're going to set all these parameters. We're going to lower these settings and set these um, resolution targets and frame rate targets for the hardware specifically and make that version compatible. Part of that was also part of piracy and making sure that you, you know, when you put it on PC, anybody could rip it off, but the console version was protected and safe through all the uh, different things they did on that version of the game. Mm -hmm. But I think the consoles need to go away from here is the one version you get. You're lucky if we get a performance mode, (laughs) another tangent being that digital foundry proved that if you wanted and you were okay with differing frame rates, that they think you could play Starfield at 60 frames on your Series X in areas where it would dive to 45 or right. 30 sometimes. And then in interior, it was always running at 60, right? But the developers do not let us have that choice. And as we get into mobile, where you've got now got an iPhone 15 that would fit into a TV, you've got processors that are so small they could fit into a handheld, they could fit into a TV, you can have AAA quality gaming the way you want, and just take away all that. Nobody likes to go in. I'm sorry, I'm on a soapbox here for a second, but but bear with me. I've been on PC long enough to know I hate. When when people are like, why does Colt play these games on PC? I hate going in there and tweaking. I, I gotta tweaking lower the shadows. I gotta lower this. I gotta I gotta I'll drop the resolution again because it's I'll not holding you. 60. I won't even put a frame <laughs> counter on. I hate that stuff. I, I set you. it, I run pro peel it. I set it and forget it. I I I tell myself, hey, it's mm-hmm. gonna run at 1440p. It's gonna run at 60, 90% of the time, and I'm just gonna enjoy the freaking game. And I think that they should allow consoles to be more fluid mm-hmm. and just let the game run give the users just a little bit more choice in changing how they do things maybe i don't maybe i'm crazy to think it would be great if i got my game on series x and it was basically the pc version i get in there and there's all these settings i'm like but it is so nice that you can just play a console and not worry about if it's going to run or not like they do a really good job with that but do you see where i'm going where we have to get rid of this mindset where the console is limited because the developers have set the parameters and they've told us like Todd Howard's like, you're not going to play it at 60 because we want it to be able to do all these things. Right. But the no, handheld I, I is the big, okay. the big, sorry about that. That's a tangent, but the handheld's a big part of that where all these handhelds are going to become really, really popular. Novel's got one. Um, the rock allies, big steam decks kind of slowing down. There's, it's just going to be more of this coming and all these people are going to load this up and they're going to just, change a couple settings and just enjoy their even if they plug it in to a power (laughs) wall (laughs) you got to keep it next to the wall don't worry about that (laughs) yeah i don't know no i hear what you're saying man it's it's a tough one and and again i'm not a developer but you know at at the end of the day there there is the convenience right of a the of a console of just firing it up 
and it works. And you don't have to, what we call it, tweaking and twerking <laughs> and, and doing all this, you know, settings and all right, you got to bring it down and get throw up on FSR and bring the shadow. Like, I get it. And, and that's <sighs> why, they, to me, there will always be a place for console. It's, it's just that convenience of, of setting up. So to me, I just look at it as like, you know, you go into the dealership and, you, you know, you're getting a pre made model kind of deal versus like, you know, we're doing F1 specialty customizing racing. You know what I mean? Like there's, it's levels to it. And some people really enjoy that level of, 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 of customization. I, I do hear your point on, and I think we're slowly getting there, but right on console where it's like, okay, remember there was an era where we didn't even have performance and quality mode. Yeah. Right. There was an error there. So I think that's like the little concessions that developers are making to give options there. But I think they're erring on caution and stability. And I think that's why they won't give the console guy that level of interactivity with, with the, um, you know, the graphical settings. OK, yeah, so that's well said. We got to mm -hmm. talk about next gen now. Right. Because this is the last thing of the consoles is uh, is Microsoft's supposed plan for 2028. Sorry, Cold, for your, your video for Xbox starting next-gen at 2026. Um, yeah. Big mistake, by the way. Super weird. So this is they said this is their... Not my mistake. <laughs> their mistake. <laughs> this is their cohesive... They're like, eight years is too long, and then they do it three gens in a row, but go ahead. The co mm -hmm. Their cohesive hybrid compute, and this is their vision, develop a next-generation hybrid game platform capable of leveraging the combined power of the client and cloud to deliver... Deeper immersion and entirely new classes of game experiences optimized for real-time gameplay and creators. We will enable new levels of performance beyond the capabilities of the client hardware alone. And they talk about key strategic divisions or decisions and investments about using ARM 64 instead of AMD, Colt. Like, instead of, you know, using X64 Zen 6, but maybe actually switching yeah. the CPU to ARM 64. And I did I did see Jeff Grubb kind of theorize that, hey, we've seen the timeline about how like they needed to make these decisions. He's like, what if Jason Ronald and their team, because we know they stopped on back compat in 2021, mm -hmm. what if they stopped doing it and then kind of went to see if it was possible to do the back compat on the ARM? He, he made a tweet about it, so... Um, that for the GPU they want to co-design with AMD or license AMD IP uh, Navi Five uh, for compatibility, and it would uh, graphics innovation would be called next gen DirectX ray tracing, dynamic global global illumination, micro polygon rendering optimizations, and machine learning based super resolution, and extensibility model for faster iteration and innovation. And they kind of have like a a slide where you know because people said xbox is done with consoles and clearly that's not mm -hmm. the case uh, right. what this console will be i don't know but they they the slide is like what is xbox would be for next gen it's like you have pc you have consoles you have handheld you have tvs you have uh streaming sticks you have cloud consoles and all this sort of stuff which would encompass this this hybrid game platform that leverages the cloud in some way so, I don't know. What are your initial thoughts about their plans for next generation and stuff? <laughs> Sounds a lot like the stuff they promised us this generation. Was Power of the, the Cloud, ladies off. and gentlemen, is, is back. I remember, I remember sitting watching the Xbox One reveal, and they talked about this thing's got like 13 million transistors, and, <laughs> and, and the cloud <laughs> is going to do all this sort of stuff. And obviously, you know, they couldn't talk about power because the PS4 hadn't beat on that, so they talk about other mm -hmm. things. But is, you know, 2028, you know, five years away, are we at this point now? We've seen... Games take leverage of the cloud to be better, like Microsoft Flight Sim, Call of Duty. I know stream stuff in. So we're at this point where like you could have a console with the power, with the help of power to cloud to make things better. I don't know. I, I don't know what, what to really think of this because I'm not really uh, a tech person or what. I don't know. Like, okay, what what would be the advantages or disadvantages of going with ARM versus the current one with AMD? Those sort of decisions you would have to make. You know. Um, I, I don't know anything about that other than I assume that AMD wins the lowest bid uh, when it comes to making consoles for PlayStation and Xbox. So AMD is, uh, you know, they don't go to AMD because I think AMD is the greatest. AMD is amazing. But um, I would just think they're the lowest bidder and they provide a great quality product. 
and whatever they go with next generation. But like that, those things you rattled off all sounded like stuff that I've talked about for two through for three years. Mm. Like you talk about FSR direct machine learning, um, uh, just all these different things that they ray tracing and all the, these things, global illumination have been promised for many years. And I think we've had a very long three year cross generation development cycle and Xbox has only really put out one true next generation game with Starfield. Um, and PlayStation has had a couple of quasi next generation games. So yeah, it's, um, it's been a long time coming. So I hate to see the promises being delivered many years after. And I'm really bugged that they decided to go a whole entire eight years. But I think this is the last set of uh, consoles we're going to see. I, I just, think the future is going to change. Interesting. You think this is, this is the last console Xbox will make, huh? I think if they're going to go eight years in 2028, and you add another eight years and you're in the, uh, what's, what's the math? 2036. You're in. Oh yeah, I mean I've been saying in the 2030s we will be in the mode. Don't get mad at me guys, but I think in the 2030s imagine I'll be completely gray and have no hair whatsoever <laughs> and I'll still be handsome. Yeah, you'd be like Cog right now. Uh, He's got no hair. He's not gray yet get though. Down, get down with the boy again. <laughs> yeah. But you know the the Neptune will be shining off our bald heads and in the 2030s I think we'll be in the in that time where I was like, you know, I don't really use my CDs are sitting over there. I don't really use them. Um, it's like somebody said in your chat, they're like, it, cars haven't come with a CD player in like 10 years, right? Um, I think we'll be in that thing where we're just like, yeah, I really liked my consoles back when you pop a disc or a cartridge or whatever, but I don't really use them anymore. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, I know it sucks to hear that because there's always going to be a need for one, but in 2028, when there's a brand new console, if you get in the 20, I'm saying 2030, two years after the next generation drops, like if you have a console or you decide you don't want one, there's still going to be one available for the next eight years. So I don't know. It's like a 2020 or 2036 or whatever you said. Um, 2028. Yeah. We, well, I mean, yeah, if you get, if that generation goes yeah, 20, another six, another eight yeah, years. twenty. If that if that generation goes another six or eight years, you're looking twenty thirty six, twenty hey, thirty eight. Fallout five might Even be if, out by then. Like there still be a console. Like if you if you live in a place where you need a console or you have in your in your gaming livelihood, like you can't just go full on demand with this super fast infrastructure of the cloud that will be in the future. Then you could still get a console because they'll be fairly newish, even in the twenty thirties. So I think it's not crazy for people to expect that. I like having consoles. Uh, even after all I say, I like having them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How, how do you feel about... I mean, and there's not a lot here yet, so we don't really know, but how do you feel about their current next-gen plans that may or may not be changing, according to Phil, right? I mean, mm-hmm. Cog, how, how, how does uh, hybrid cloud stuff sound to you? I'm torn. I'm torn because, look, I'll be honest. There's a, There's a part of me that when I hear hybrid anything, <laughs> right, you get a little nervous and you get, you know, how, what's the implementation? And, and again, it reminds me a little bit of um, Xbox One era, right? And again, hate to keep bringing it up, but, the, you know, the crackdown on 3 demo and, you know, look at the destructural environment, look how the cloud, we're, we're, we're leveraging the cloud, right, to to have these type of graphical improvements. And then the questions become, well, hey, how do you implement that if your, your internet is garbage? <laughs> so like, mm-hmm. what happens to your game then, right? And then, you know, I remember small integrations. I remember um, Titanfall 1, right? And they were like, hey, we're utilizing the cloud for the, you know, the AI, the enemies. Because remember, it was like player versus player, but there was like bots in between or something like that. Yeah. That, mm-hmm. was, that was one thing. And then, but then I look at, more recent integrations and I look at something like flight sim and I say, wow, that's really cool. Like that is not possible, you know, to have that type of telemetry and, 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 and geographical data and weather and all this, you know, really cool stuff. And I guess where I'm at right now, again, this is 2023 cog fighting against 2028 cog that doesn't know <laughs> what's going on. Right. So 2023 <laughs> cog has a face like, I don't know. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? But 2028 is like, yo, what if it's 
the technology has improved. What if it's not as, as, as extreme with graphical integration and more of back end integration, making mm-hmm. experiences better, right? And I look at a lot of the documentation and, you know, it's talking about, you know, optimization and acceleration of game performance oper- and development for players and creators, right? Cloud to edge architecture across Silicon graphics and OS enabling ubiquitous play. So what if it's back-end stuff that truly m- makes the experience for gamers better and where I kind of go and I'm leaning towards, and this may not be true, but I know everybody laughed Stadia out the room when Phil Harrison came out and I get it, right? Because they were yeah. o- ultra aggressive, like it wasn't a no hybrid anything. It was like, yo, you don't need a console. This is, you know, whatever. And we have more flops than everybody else, right? But <laughs> one, of the, <laughs> one of the cool things in that presentation, if you remember, I know a lot of people didn't watch it because they rolled their eyes, but I watched the whole thing because I'm a techie. And one of the things that was actually cool, Randy, they were talking about like, yo, if Rand Outdoor 19 is on right now and he's playing seamless integration with his YouTube chat and your game, yeah. and they had all these cool creator features that never came to market, right? Because Stadia abandoned it. But I just remember it like, yo, that is actually dope if they implement it. So part of me is like, calm down. Because one, again, this is the this is the bad part about these leaks. We're reading this with cold verbiage, mm-hmm. no proof of concept, no demo, no intro. And then if you look at the other parts of the documentation, right, a lot of where they have like next generation gamer powered by AI and machine learning. That is another part, right, where it's like we're not we're forgetting about the AI part. Right. And I know, you know some, some people scare about chat GBT, but there are advances in AI that I think will make player experience better now. That, to me, is where I think they may be going. And if you look at that last slide, they have green as far as the things that they've already established with these concepts in Microsoft Gaming currently now. Then they have orange, which is proof of concept, research and proof of concept, still working on it, still trying to get this stuff going on, procedural generation content. And then you have the the gray, which is the fertile future ideation. So, again, stuff not there right now, but maybe in 2028. So, again, I'm trying to be open-minded. Where is gaming in 2028? And the key for them is going to be able to show and implement these things to say, okay, yo, that's next level. That's the future. And the last thing I'll say, even on a smaller scale, is that, you know, again, I'm a traditional gamer. Think about when we picked up our Series X's, right? We picked up our Series X's, you got it out the box, you took the wrapping off, packaging was nice. But what was the first (laughs) thing you did? The first thing you did, and I've never done this with a console, the Series X told me. <laughs> I'm just that. kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the thing that we did was we grabbed our phone. The Series X told us to grab our phone Set and it up. do the setup process. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Again, things that we would, we would never think about. And it was a fairly simple, easy setup. And I'm like, yo, this is pretty cool. So it again, was, yeah. I got to try to think outside of my box as far as right now. Right now, yeah, of course, a little scary. I don't want to hear hybrid anything, as far, especially if anything is reliant on cloud for graphics, you know what I'm saying, kind of thing. But if we're talking back end, if we're talking infrastructure, if we're talking making the gamer and creator experience integrate seamlessly and do more cooler things, then yes, I'm for it and I'm willing to give it a chance. So that's where I'm at. And the last thing I'll just say is I am just glad this kind of still puts to bed that they're out of the console business. No, mm-hmm. they're still in it. And that, to me, is the biggest takeaway. Because of everyone, I know me and King have this long running joke. He's like, oh, PlayStation's going to be an app and whatever, whatever. And, and to me, I was like, King, whoever's going to be an app will be Microsoft first before, you know, mm-hmm. what you call for PlayStation. PlayStation is tried and true traditional hardware, you know, I mean, hardware thing. So to see Microsoft's commitment to the console still makes me happy in 2028. They're not going away from it. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, they're supposed to be closing in a couple of years. <laughs> right? Here's here's their plan all the way up to 2028, but they're shutting down in 2026 or 2027, at least according to some of the stuff. You know, and then, like, obviously, a lot of this is not – we're not supposed to see this. This is all yeah. confidential. It's like yeah. you know, FTC deposition and stuff. But, um, yeah, I, I, mean, I don't know what to really think about their next-gen plans. I mean, we obviously know Xbox has been more than a console, as Colt likes to say all the time on, on Twitter and elsewhere. And it's been like mm-hmm. that since 2016, day one on PC. They're adding more and more platforms. I mean, let's be real. Stuff, they've so. been putting, they've been putting the majority of their first party games on PC since 05. 
since Halo 2. Right. So uh, there, uh, even if you look back, there aren't that many Xbox console only games. You know, weird that it's like Halo 5 and Forza Horizon 2 yeah. are kind of weird titles. But anyway, so we just have kind of an overview of what, you know, we next gen, at least their plans are. I mean, things can change. I mean, like Phil even tweeted out. We've seen the conversation around old emails and documents. It is hard to see our team's work shared in this way because so much has changed and there's so much to be excited about right now and in the future. We will share the real plans when we are ready. You know, so it's like, okay, obviously things can change, you know, but certain things probably can't. Maybe next, I don't know. But then he wrote a memo to people at Xbox that came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. He said, Today, several documents submitted in the court proceedings related to our proposed acquisition of Activision Blizzard were unintentionally disclosed. And I remember being seeing all this happening and everybody was blaming the FTC that they did this intentionally. And then Oops. it basically came out it was Microsoft's own fault or maybe the court's fault, but Microsoft was the one. Like, FTC had nothing to do with it, so it sounds like it might have been a Microsoft problem. Uh, Phil says, I know this is disappointing, even if many of the documents are well over a year old and our plans have evolved. I also know we take all the confidentiality of our plans and our partner's information very seriously. This leak obviously is not us living up to the expectations. We will learn from what happened and be better going forward. We all put incredible amounts of passion and energy into our work, and this is never how we want that hard work to be shared with the community. That said, there's so much more to be excited about, and when we're ready, we'll share the real plans with our players. In closing, I appreciate all the work that you pour into Team Xbox to surprise and delight our players. In the days and weeks ahead, let's stay focused on what we can control. Continuing the amazing success of Starfield, the upcoming launch of the incredible and accessible Forza Motorsport, and continuing to build game services and devices that million players can, millions of players can enjoy. So, you know, it's not maybe too surprising that Phil came out and addressed this. Because, I mean, like, you know... He's basically, you know, Xbox is out in the street, pants off, <laughs> fucking full ass everywhere. Everybody, everybody can like see Every, everything, right? They out here, they out here, they, naked, they they out here double, double, double cheeks out on a Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? Oh man, not the cheeks yeah. out. Oh, man. Phil, Phil messaged me. He's like, "Did you see Rand's video?" And I go, "Yeah." He goes, "Man, he leaked everything." I go, "Phil, it wasn't Rand. It was already leaked." He's like, Bro. "Oh, okay." Oh, no, we blame Saab. Saab, Saab leaked it all. Man. He's, uh, he's in Guantanamo somewhere. He's in an undisclosed location. <laughs> so, yeah, we got all that stuff. Uh, I don't know how much of this will change. Maybe some some of it, maybe none well, of we it. Know but, you know, when you break down some of the games, which I think might be next. Oh, yeah, we're, we're going to be talking about some games. Yeah, about that, the, games that will kind of, the games are the, the, the best part. Of, because, of what stuff has changed, right? Yeah, because like, the, like kinda... the console, like, I'll be, I'll be honest. I'll be, uh, I'll be straight. Like the refreshes, I'm always honest and straight. But the refreshes, <laughs> the refreshes to me aren't that interesting, right? It's okay. it's 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 basically what we have currently right now, just a little bit more, like an extra extra hard drive space. I will say the most, at least for their, their it's too hard to really get excited about whatever their next gen plans are because it's so far away and we don't know if anything's changed. But at least like in the short term, the two consoles, it's kind of like yeah. What it doesn't really do much for me. However, the controller, that's exciting to me, because like mm -hmm. I've been saying for a while, I want haptics in my controller because yeah. I really enjoyed the haptics on the Dual Sense. I don't like the adaptive triggers though, so I'm really cool. So it's really cool to see Xbox being like, we're gonna take something that worked from PlayStation and throw mm -hmm. away the stuff that didn't work, and we're gonna we're have gonna to copy them like they've been copying us. Yeah, yeah so we, we're, we oh have a new God. we have this new controller. Oh. And we're gonna have haptics on it, like I like out of that stuff, out of the consoles and the next gen stuff. The one that excited me the most was mm -hmm. the controller. But when you get in, we'll talk about the games because that's the most important part. We have Joe Repco, member for twenty seven months, saying, uh, "Is that the Lord Cogmito?" <laughs> it really shows what it takes to replace Jez for one podcast. All that beef and the suave <laughs> voice of Colt. Have a fun one, guys. Shout out to Flame Lords of Game and Dad Dad. That is the whole Lord right Cognito. He always teases me. So uh, we got uh, we got Dub, member for 26 months. I need that new controller. Hope it releases soon. Thanks for keeping me entertaining. Uh, thanks for you know keeping me entertained while at work. Happy Friday. Shout out to Ran, Jazz, Cog, and Colt. We got James Wizo saying, what's up, Ran, Cot? Ran, blah, 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 blah. Ran, Colt, and Cog. Hope you're all good. Oh, we're doing great. We have Nintendo Don the Otaku says, love this panel with three of the biggest Nintendo lovers I know. I'm sure the Nintendo topic will be nothing but positive 
and unbiased. Hashtag creepy uncle cog. <laughs> creepy uncle cog. Yeah, they t- they mad mm-hmm. at me, man. I, I was slandering Nintendo first party. I was just said I'm not the target. Did they list I mean, like the- a- <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was they like, listen I mean, to me? I mean, good. Yeah, bro. Oh, I know you be going to. Yeah, I, I went in. So, yeah, they they they, they not happy with me because I was I was like I felt like the the creepy uncle, but I'm not supposed to be there for those mm. games. <laughs> Otter- <laughs> what are you talking about Cog? Everyone loves those games. Like it's just not for me. It's not for me. Otter <laughs> Kate says, imagine if Xbox's real plans include the cancellation of the leak Fallout Three remaster. Maddie would expire. Oh, well, yeah, he yeah, would not be happy. Yeah. It would not be happy. Chris R., I'm not disappointed about no mid-gen upgrade. Devs still haven't used the tools they currently have. Why should Ooh. we believe more power would Ooh. help? Interesting. That's right. It's Audio very interesting. Yeah. Right? Um, okay, let's, let's, I'll get back to the rest of these. Let's talk about the Bethesda stuff, right? The games. Um, because this or is... As Tim Dog would call it, Bethesda. Bethesda. <laughs> Or as, or, or as Tim Dog would say, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Loving it. Loving it so much. Starfield. I'm 30 I'm hour mad that I didn't game. get a Tim Dog call today because oh, when so when news is hot, like Tim, Tim is, yeah. will sing to you on the phone. He'll rap to you yeah. on the phone. Yeah. He'll rap. Oh, he it's the bars? best. He, he's oh, got yeah. some bars. Like, I'll get a phone call from Tim when big Xbox news is breaking. He's like, Cold Eastwood Xbox is the best. And then I'll like, hey, Tim. And he'll just keep singing and keep singing. Like, I love it, man. He's He's got the biggest heart, man. He's the best. He's been there from the beginning. I met, when the first time I ever met Tim, though, I knew he was a real one because my first E3, was it 2015? I get off the plane. We get to the Fan Fest. And I'm mm-hmm. like, who is this dude with a Project Natal shirt? <laughs> and I'm no like, no way. I, I, you're like, you, you, if you know, you know, right? Yeah, you're yeah, an expert, you yeah. know. And I'm like, he's running around with a Project Natal. I love this guy. It was hilarious. Jeez, that's like circa 07, man. Yeah, that's that's Milo with the with the connected Peter Molyneux, Remember? I remember. Oh yeah. Oh Tim, good old Tim. Oh, you you remember how done. raw Tim was back in the day on Twitter, oh, like 2013, 2014, compared to how he is now. He's a little bit more laid back, but Tim he's, used to go hard. Up. He's 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 become a a seasoned veteran at this <laughs> yeah. point. Tim used to go we hard. Love him. Yeah, but so, one of the other things that leaked during all this is Bethesda's roadmap for one, two, three, four, five years. This goes Ooh. back to 2020, and we can see the evolution of at least what uh, Bethesda's management was telling Xbox when they acquired them. Like, this is our roadmap for the next five years. And, well, <laughs> it didn't really pan out at all whatsoever uh, because a lot of the stuff here is yet to be announced. A lot of stuff here is yet to come out, but... If you go back to 2020, uh, Doom Eternal DLC, Elder Scrolls Online, Fallout, Wastelanders, Deathloop, which was delayed a year, right? 2021, we're getting into it. 2021 was supposed to speed the release of Starfield, the Elder Scrolls Online expansion, Redfall, Doom Eternal DLC, Ghostwire Tokyo, Fallout Worlds for Fallout 76, and Project Kibiki. Now, Project Kibiki is Hi-Fi Rush. Right, so oh, look, cool. look at that. So, 2021, they were expecting Starfield, Redfall, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, and 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 Hi-Fi Rush, and they all got delayed. In fact, Starfield and Redfall and Hi-Fi Rush all got delayed t- t- two years because Ghostwire Tokyo got delayed a year. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Every game got delayed. And you remember? A year. I, I don't remember. I remember saying in 2021, I had heard that Starfield was supposed to release in 2021. And then yeah, people are said the same thing. And then like, oh, but, and here it is on the list. Like, you how know, old is this list though, Randall? This, o- this old. This is a uh, list is from 2020, so three years old at this point, right? Things okay. change. You you can see what they thought was going to happen, and see mm-hmm. how COVID affected stuff, and how just game development in general can be. That's why they uh, were so happy crazy. at those 2020 and 21 showcases. Yeah, like they were really like Xbox was puffing their chest, and then uh, life changed. Well, this is why I, this is why I always say because me and Jess have always had this conversation about like when is enough enough, and then when it comes to acquisitions, and I say it's never enough because you, you can never. I, well, I don't care because you can never be too sure about when games when games are going to be releasing, right? You can never be too sure about how the world is going to uh, react to something. Like obviously, you couldn't plan for a pandemic, but I mean, if you had more studios, you could essentially potentially have more games. Uh, you know, so when you look at this. If Microsoft's like, oh, we're going to be getting 
Bethesda and law oh, we got Starfield in 2021 and Redfall and Ghost and, and Hi-Fi Rush but then the reality sets in and you don't have any of that and then you don't have any of your stuff from your first party Xbox mm-hmm. Game Studios so saying like the more studios you have and the more projects you have in development the better chance they that had you would all, fill up yeah they had all that back that that support net and yeah. now you can see why 2022 and half of 23 was completely barren because those were all the games that were supposed to be out so yeah. 2022 was supposed to be Indiana Jones, Colt. Indiana what? Jones was supposed to release in 2022 alongside Starfield DLC. So Starfield was supposed to be out in 2021, and then Starfield DLC was supposed to be out in 2022. Starfield didn't even come out until this year, right? So Indiana Jones was supposed to be out. I Gotham Knights in the meantime. Indiana Jones was supposed to be out in 2022, and I love that Colt, game. Indiana Jones is a planned trilogy. It has three planned titles. What? Ooh. That's what it says, at least according to this document three years ago. So this is the other thing. Like, I think Xbox's roadmap, like, for hardware and stuff is probably, we know how long it takes to, you know, lock those things in. There's been plenty of interviews with Phil over the course of time where it's like, yeah, we, you know, you research these things, R&D. It takes a long time, long lead up. So when I look at the refresh consoles, it's like, those are probably locked in. We even saw the slide about stuff that was funded. So it's like, those probably are 100% happening. Maybe there's price differences. And obviously we know they're doing stuff for next gen. And it's probably going to be along those lines. But when you come to the games here, when we're going to be talking about this stuff, you can see how things slip, right? Indiana Jones is supposed to be out last year and it's supposed to be playing three games. Is it still planned for three games? Right? Uh, you know, are some of these games, like for instance, the Oblivion Remaster, that was supposed to be out last year. Is that even still the thing? Is the Fallout 3 remaster that's on here even still the thing? Because you never know with game cancellations. I mean, Xbox showed off Scalebound twice at two, two E3s and then canceled the game. They canceled Fable Legends after showing it off and having a beta. Uh, you know, So you, you're never too sure about how things progress. So some of these things may end up happening and they may not, right? It's just kind of a cool... Think- Behind I the think Xbox look. no longer cancels games. I think they just, if anything, they're going to put that pressure they wish they would have done in the past onto, I don't care if it takes three more years. I think that, I would think that's where Phil is sitting based on how he reacted to Scalebound and Platinum Games and, and Arcane with Redfall, that no longer will they just say, we're done. Uh, and, and no longer will he say, oh, you want to go ahead and put it out even though we don't think it's ready? Right? I don't think that Phil Spencer exists anymore. What do you think, yeah, I mean, Rand um, or Cog? No, no I, I think that his statements were telling, you know, about, you know, uh, that whole d- debacle. And can I give myself a little credit, Rand? Mm-hmm. Give yourself on, all the credit, yeah. I was on Xbox 2 mm-hmm. and, 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 and with you guys. And, you know, shout out to the homie, Jez. Yeah, I rarely get a couple of W's off him because Jez is always right. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, Jez, the biggest one was the Call of Duty one. I got to give him that one. But, um, you know, I, I remember saying, I said, look, guys, like, when we got... 2022 happened, and it was off of 2021, which was, what is it? They were on Publisher of the Year, Metacritic, mm-hmm. or what have you. They had yep. the m- amazing lineup. And 22, 22 happens. We expect at that time, you know, Redfall and Starfield. And to get the double whammy of not only Redfall delayed and Starfield delayed, and we're looking at poor old Obsidian, like, where well, they just had some kind of, I call them like supplementary titles and, you know, Grounded mm-hmm. and Pentiment, which are still great titles, don't get me wrong, but they weren't intended to carry the year for Xbox. <laughs> and I looked at that, I said, this is a dark moment. This is a top five dark moment in Xbox history that there was nothing in place. And Phil's emails, you know, really validate that. He was just like, we're in a tough spot. You know, now that the news is not out, we're going to miss holiday, even though it wasn't communicated at the time. And he's like, yo, we've got to do better with dates. We've got to do better with executions. We've got to supplement. And he's like, looking at 2021, that was the cadence that, that he wanted, right? So it was really a bad time. And to hear him reiterate everything I said, because that's how I felt. I'm like, yo, this is bad and it couldn't be good financially for what they were expecting to get out of game pass subs and and so on and so forth so i just wanted to hark back to that you know as far as that year but yeah you know if we we're going to go into the i don't know where you're going with it ran well yeah i mean you mentioned you mentioned that that email and i'll just bring it up because phil talked about it he said yeah with the news that starfield's gonna miss holiday blah 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 but he says 
We keep talking a bit about AAA a quarter in the service, and it feels like we are likely to go through a gap of almost 16 months between big exclusive launches on our platform, Halo Infinite being our last on December 8th, 2021. This is really mm-hmm. a disaster situation for us, given all we've invested in content across our studios that are Game Pass con- content fund. We need to learn from this and build a plan moving forward. He says, we need to get much better at overall portfolio planning on our games with real honesty of on dates. And he even mentioned how, like, hey, we had Flight Sim. We had Psychonauts 2. We had Age 4. We had Halo. And we had Forza Horizon 5. And there was good third-party games, like Back for Blood. And they set the bar really high. He says, we set a bar really high in 2021 on quality and good pacing of content, which was awesome to see. But to come off that year with no big exclusives launching in 2022 Ooh. is a portfolio planning miss that we can't afford. Yes. Yeah, and he says, like, we need to roll up our sleeves and get planning on the next two. I mean, we talked about that. Like, I mean, obviously nobody wants to, like, oh, you're being harsh on Xbox. But it was a disaster. And Ooh. Phil literally said it was a disaster. You know, some people like to always say, oh, it's not that big of a deal. No, it was a complete he's, disaster. So, I mean, like. And I, he's saying that knowing that they went through 2017 through. 2020 right yeah. where the as far as triple a games or big uh, successful ips um they didn't have a whole lot of that during the 2017 to 2020 era uh outside of you know their staples their halo gears and forza games and me as a big xbox fan like we were always asking for that just one we wanted that oh, one know. new Con- big Con- open Con- world the leader adventure of game that, of the just one movement oh, right yeah movement. So, and he's saying that knowing that ending the Xbox One generation, like they were just building up all these studios, and you can hear the frustration in what he types there. Yeah. Yeah. That they had essentially they had um, twenty three studios that were all making incredible games, and none of them were ready to launch. Yeah, and that has to suck. Yeah, yeah. and then when you when then you see what Bethesda's management was telling Phil. When they acquired him in 2020, like, this is our roadmap, and essentially see, like, how everything was pushed two years. Starfield pushed two years. Redfall pushed two years, although Redfall should have been pushed to the cancellation door, I guess. Mm-hmm. Right? Ghostwire Tokyo pushed <laughs> two years. Deathloop <laughs> pushed two years. Hi-Fi Rush pushed two years. Right? And then you think about 2020, 2020, 2020 2022, and Indiana Jones was supposed to be out. An Oblivion mm-hmm. remaster. And Indiana Ooh. Jones has three games, which is which is great. So I guess that's what Machine Games is going to be on. And then you get mm-hmm. to this year. And then you get to the one that it's like, oh, oh. Yes. 2023 was supposed to be Doom Year Zero Ooh. and DLC. Now, we've been wondering what it's been working on. And, mm-hmm. you know, I played all the Doom games 2016 and Doom Eternal. I played the DLC. I thought, hey, that story seems to be wrapped up. But Doom Year Zero, I mean, unless that's somebody else's game or like uh, like a different studio or something, but to see like, oh, we have another Doom, and that's that was supposed to be this year, alongside yeah. a Project Kestrel, which is anybody's guess. I don't know what that is. Another Elder Doom Year Scro- Zero didn't turn into that that mobile phone game, did it? No, because they do have a free to pl- <laughs> they do have free to play mobile on the other on the right hand side. Um, so different projects. These are console and PC. Okay. So no, Doom Year okay. Zero didn't turn into that. Um, okay. And then you also have the thing called Project Platinum. So in 2023, it's supposed to be Doom Year Zero, Project Kestrel, and Project Platinum. Now, like, I don't think we know what Project Kestrel or Project Platinum are. And obviously, Doom Year Zero hasn't been announced, right? Um, mm-hmm. So then you get to 2024, what's supposed to be next year, and you have Elder Scrolls Six. So... Th- Bethesda was telling Xbox in 2020 <laughs> that Elder Scrolls 6 was coming in 2024, three years after Starfield. How crazy is that, right? So you have Elder Scrolls 6, you have a Project Kestrel expansion, so whatever game that is is getting an expansion. You have a licensed IP game, so there's another licensed IP game in the works that's not Indiana Jones. You have a Fallout 3 remaster, you have another expansion for Elder Scrolls, you have a Ghostwire Tokyo sequel... You have Dishonored Weird. 3, <laughs> oh, and then you have Doom Year Zero DLC. So with all that out there, Cog, I oh. mean, what speaks to you the most? Like wh- everything Yo. here, the games, how things get delayed, the expectations, what could be these projects? What stands well, out to you? 
What's your what what are you looking at on this uh oh, this list here from Bethesda? I'm, I'm gonna be real with you, Red. Look, date commitments aside, mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> clearly we did not Bethesda did not hit these targets. Yes. But I just look at this lineup and this portfolio, and you mean to tell me, right? You know, Starfield, the DLC, Ghostwire gets a sequel. Dishonored 3, the mm. beloved, right? Things that we were like, man, we wish, you know, Arcane goes back to form. So the fact that that was on their mind, the fact that I'm such an oblivion guy, they were going to do the rematch. They're going to do the, the Fallout. And this is my thing. I think the majority of this is still in play. I just think they're two years, three years behind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I just feel that they they just dropped the ball on the commitment and... You know, I do. I did put blame on Bethesda for what happened. For I felt Phil took the bullet for them. You know, when he was on, you know, stage talking about, you know, obviously they're disappointed with that year. And then, if you notice, that was the year we got the twelve month stuff that I didn't like. Mm, and I think the yeah. reason why we got that is because of an anger and a frustration of lack of commitments with honesty on dates. And, and I think he wanted to kind of double down to give assurance to the base. Now, obviously, we saw how that played out because not all those dates were made either. But I understood the mindset, even though I didn't agree with the execution, because I always feel when you put 12 months on something, you take the joy and the wonder of what could happen outside that window. But if I look at Bethesda and ZeniMax as, as, as a whole, this is an amazing lineup of games that is coming, right? You're talking about... Indiana Jones, three playing titles, a couple of projects we still don't even know. A licensed IP a game. A licensed IP that's not Indiana Jones. Whoa. Yeah. Mandalorian. Look, <laughs> mm. I, hey, hey, right? Don't, you know, Cog like licensed IP. If you want to make that just one, you know, by all means, <laughs> do what you have, you know, do what you got to do. But for me, also, I'm such a Tango fan now, right? You saw Hi Fi Rush. And now, mm-hmm. like, I know people don't don't like it as much as I do. But I see the potential of a Ghostwire Tokyo. I finished that game, and I thought the combat was amazing. It was a little, obviously, the performance needed work. But I, would, I, would, I felt the foundation was there for a sequel. Now, just refine it, touch it up, because I think there's something really cool there. So, in a whole rant, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, if Bethesda was able to execute on time, right, mm-hmm. this would be magical. But just in general, what they bring as an acquisition, as a publisher... This is amazing to me. And think about this. Think about all these games that could literally carry Xbox for uh, the next couple of years. We haven't even talked about Xbox Game Studios. I know, because the Xbox Game Studios didn't leak. Granted, we know a lot of what Xbox Game Studios is making. Right. Uh, you know, And there's also the, the global publishing, which I think came out that yeah. from interview, maybe they have 12 games they're working on. You're right. Like, this is just Bethesda by itself. Seems they'll, they'll be, you know, obviously, I, I think... Clearly, the pandemic screwed everything up, right? I mean, Absolutely. and th- nobody likes to hear that anymore about game development and stuff, but like that really had a, an impact, right? And everybody mm-hmm. was like, oh man, 2023 is so great. It's because like finally everybody's kind of, you know, g- getting back and it's like the games are coming out. But you look at this, it's like, man, even if all this stuff is pushed, right? Like Indiana Jones, mm-hmm. I mean, is Indiana Jones a 2024 game? Because everything here was pushed two years. Does that mean Indiana Jones is 2024? Does that mean Doom is like 2025? Then you start like, okay, the back half looks really good. It was just that year in 2022 that was kind of like, you know, Xbox fans had to suffer through for lack of a better better better, uh, better term. So, Cole, how are you feeling? I, I, when you look at all these these projects and how they, you know, essentially were planned for earlier and coming out, like how, how are you looking at uh, Bethesda's roadmap? Does it excite you? Is there anything that um, that that it most it mostly excites me? Um, I think the mean average delay would be to take those dates and and punch them two years, some one year uh, forward to find out what they really are. Um, I've told my audience a couple times that we would see Indiana Jones this year at the showcase, and we didn't. Um, meaning the game is not coming out in the summer of 2024 maybe it's gonna maybe it's gonna make at the end of the year of 2024 like we'll see it and then it comes out in six months but who knows um the ghostwire tokyo thing i think is weird because i don't know how successful that game is and i know you and i Rand, really like that game for like the first three quarters of it and then toward yeah. the end when you get to the end it kind of overstays welcome steam. yeah but Cog, it was, it was also so good game, in so, the yeah. 
yeah, you and I put in, I don't know, 40 plus hours and like, we just tried to do everything in it. And, um, not, nobody really talked about that game, um, for a while, but, uh, um, I don't know. Dis- I, 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 I kind of question these games as we talk about them. I, I wasn't so sure how successful Dishonored 2 is because when you, when you ask those questions, you're like, where's Wolfenstein? And we know that Wolfenstein has not sold what it should to continue on. And Machine Games is going to be working on a trilogy in force for Indiana Jones and not finish up uh, the Wolfenstein series, which I think is fantastic. But um, unless it was one, it's of the, so weird. Unless it was one of the project names, right? There's there's three project names that we don't know: Project Kestrel, which has an expansion; um, Project Platinum, which we have no idea, and a licensed IP game. Obviously, Machine Games isn't, you know, uh, Wolfenstein wouldn't be that. So, right? Yeah, right. you're right. I mean, that was always. The th- I remember being on Defining Duke one of my first times in like 2021. And we were talking about because it's like a it's like a thing. We we I go on there and we predict E three right, Cog like yeah, every yeah, year. Of yeah. And I think Maddie was like, "This is the year Wolfenstein." I, Jazz like Wolfenstein. We you and me were like yeah, Wolfenstein. Yeah. Everybody just yep. assumed Wolfenstein three was real, and then it didn't show up, and it hasn't shown up here since, and it's not in their roadmap. So I guess maybe Wolfenstein three doesn't exist, or at least maybe existed at one point and they put pause on it. But for yeah. me. The two standouts here are Dishonored 3 and Doom Year Zero. I'm assuming Doom Year Zero is its game, right? Um, Dishonored 3, it's like, okay, but who's making Dishonored 3? Is it the people who made Deathloop or the people who made Redfall? Because if, at least according to this, Deathloop was supposed to be on 2020 and Redfall 2021, and then Dishonored 3 was coming in 2024. Which, so, yeah, it would probably be Leon, but are, are, wouldn't they want to do a Deathloop 2? We know we know from the voice actors that they were still sort of hiring under the old code name. So, are they doing, like, maybe a Dishonored 3 Deathloop sort of synergy game or something? Cause, I don't know. But that has me the most excited. Like, a Ghostwire Tokyo Ryan, sequel. What did, what did Arcane Austin say about... Um, that They said they were going to finish up the Redfall crap mm-hmm. and then... Uh, what were their words when they said we're excited about blah, you know, fill in the blanks? Because I don't remember the quote. I, like, what I, kind of hints do you get from that? Do I don't remember? remember. I don't remember the quote either. I thought they were said they were working on a new. They were working on something new, but I don't know if they if they were implying a new IP or if that just means they were going to tackle Dishonored Three. Mm-hmm. You know, I guess one that's of the, what I think. Looking at this here, Colt Project Crestral, that's mm-hmm. probably. I would, I would, I would imagine that's the uh, Zenimax. Yeah, your chat said uh, that's Zenimax. A, that's a name for a bird. Well, I was which... gonna say that's probably Zenimax Online's AAA game, their their new oh, game, that's right? Yeah. Right, because yeah. because then then the following year says it has an expansion, and when you Thanks, look sure. on this, every single year has an Elder Scrolls Online expansion, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. the fact that it has an expansion the following year, I would imagine. If I had to take a guess, that that is like the Elder Scroll. That's the Zenimax Online new AAA game, which we haven't yeah. seen announced, and they've been working on for a while. So, like all in all, like this is super exciting. Like I never thought we'd get a Dishonored three. We're getting one. We're getting a new Doom from ID. We got some a new licensed IP, some projects in the work, another Ghost Ghostwire Tokyo, and I think Woo! I think you can improve. I, like very much like um. Like Uncharted on Uncharted 2, where, okay, mm-hmm. you see what worked with the first game, and you can make some improvements for a second one. I, I'm down for that, right? And this only goes to 2024, so, like, I'm sure their roadmap is more robust and stuff. So, And that's just one aspect of Xbox, right? That's not even yeah. the 15 studios that fall under Matt Booty and the first party or the Xbox Global, Global Publishing, Publishing that have a whole yeah, bunch we... of games too, or ABK, or which ABK. would be coming home. But the other thing I wanted to mention before we get off the Bethesda stuff is mm-hmm. the Elder Scrolls Six, because it made waves this week that apparently it's going to be an Xbox exclusive, and people weren't happy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, because because there was a there was a slide there's like Microsoft's approach following acquisitions since 2018, and they have a slide here that says Elder Scrolls Six, mm-hmm. check mark for existing IP. And it's not a multiplayer game. It's not cross-platform play, and it's not released on PlayStation. And it says release date to be C, but expected 2026 or later. And platforms available. It says 
uh, Xbox, PC, and then it has something here for um, like, uh, what does it say here? Microsoft statement on exclusivity quote, in order to be on Xbox, I want us to be able to bring the full complete package of what we would have. And I think that would be true when I think about Elder Scrolls 6. So even though we, we sort of had an idea that Elder Scrolls 6 was going to be exclusive, I mean, you have it pretty much here, you know, uh, as being an exclusive. So, yeah. And, and I know how Starfield broke people's brains, <laughs> right? How how that whole discourse happened with that. Just imagine Elder Scrolls 6 when that releases. And Oh, I mean, there's, there's still articles being written today. Will... Elder Scrolls, in fact, come to PlayStation sooner or later. It's like, oh my gosh. It's the weirdest double standard in games media ever that uh, <laughs> we cannot allow Xbox to have an exclusive. It just doesn't make sense to them. But um, yeah. It's, but it's, Todd it's, Howard says, I like to focus. I like to focus and have my games focused on one thing. And we like focus. You right now out of pocket. <laughs> That's what he said. You, you know, in that, in that Lex Freeman interview, he's like, he's like, why, why are you exclusive to Xbox? He goes, I, I like to focus. And I'm like, I like you when you focus too, Todd Howard. <laughs> Make that exclusive, baby. Go to the world. Yeah, man, look, it ain't no surprise to me. We, we've, we've been down this road before. This is nothing new. You know, it's just that, you know, people. I mean, when Cog and I were talking to Todd Howard, you know, we were just mm -hmm. hanging out. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you were, you guys cool. were hanging out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's cool. But look, it's, some people just it, what's that? The, the five stages of grief. It's, some people just not at that acceptance stage, and, and yeah. that's just where it is. They've already made it clear, you know, where play, places where Game Pass exists on a case by case basis. You know, I guess the only thing I would say, and I, I want to ask Ren this. I didn't get a chance to ask, ask you this. Was that the only question I said, well, maybe that might still apply where it still goes to PlayStation. How do you feel about the Oblivion and Fallout remasters? I mean, How I'm, do you think I'm fine that? with those. I mean, I'm fine with them. Yeah. I mean, I know those are more like Maddie's, but like, it makes sense, especially a Fallout remaster, because who knows when you're going to get Fallout 5, right? right? Who knows when you're going to get any Fallout content? Like, we have the TV show that's coming out early next year. We know there's a Fallout 4 next-gen update coming at some point, like for free update, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. man, that is really a miss if you can't have Fallout 5 anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But if you could really kind of satiate demand and be like, here's here's a Fallout remake or a Fallout remaster and an Oblivion one as well, just to mm -hmm. kind of bide the time for either Obsidian to get out uh, Fallout New Vegas 2 or for Todd to get out a uh, Fallout 5, I think it makes a lot of sense. Right and mm -hmm. and I mean Fallout Three at this point's what and that game came out in two thousand nine if I'm if I'm not mistaken right two thousand nine two thousand eight two thousand eight I mean yeah. that's fifteen years from now mm -hmm. so if it comes out next year or the year after I mean you're talking about seventeen years I mean they can do some things if they if you wanted to make it a a, a proper like full on remake which I think you would have to because I don't know I don't think you're just doing a a small time remaster from a from a 360 game that that i think you, it needs more work to put in right yeah but well, it's already slightly remastered on xbox it runs at 4k 60 with 16 times texture filtering like you can't just uh, do a file save as series x version and call it a remaster it's got to be something bigger yeah mm -hmm. but speaking I mean, you can you can load that game up on pc and you it'll look just like the series x no matter what hardware you do, but you know people have modded the crap out of it. I'm curious to see what they would do with a remaster for Fallout 3. Yeah, and like, would they improve the the game handling, or do you leave it alone because it's an absolute classic? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Um, I will say though, if you guys are enjoying the show, make sure you hit the like button and uh, hit the subscribe button too if you haven't already. Almost at 100k, that uh, would it would Ooh. greatly help. So um, I know the CMA. Uh, pre-approved the abk deal but we got to talk about this mythical acquisition that uh, really really angered a lot of people from nintendo fans to playstation fans to journalists everybody had to get their say in here because it was one of the emails that leaked in an exhibit for this whole you know abk stuff and it revolves around nintendo and how xbox you, you see what this is, Rand? They want to monopolize the entire industry. Phil Spencer's Good. Phil Spencer's the worst. He needs to be fired. He can't just do how it. How dare you call Nintendo a prime gaming asset? Like they're not more than that. 
This is despicable. This is this is awful. This is they Microsoft needs to be out of gaming. How could they do this? On the dotted line. People literally yeah, <laughs> losing their shit over an email that re- that is basically telling somebody that is basically Phil saying that's a good idea, but no, it ain't happening. Like Phil's being Ooh. like, yeah, it would be great, but it's not. I'll just read the email, right? But like read people literally lost their fucking minds over this. Yeah. yeah. So Phil's responding to uh, Takeshi Namoto, right? He says Takeshi. I- I totally agree that Nintendo is the, and, he, and Phil capitalizes the, right? Ooh. The prime asset for us in gaming. And today gaming is our most likely path to consumer relevance. I've had numerous conversations with the leadership team of Nintendo about tighter collaboration and feel like if any U.S. company would have a chance with Nintendo, we are probably in the best position. The unfortunate or fortunate for Nintendo situation is that Nintendo is sitting on a big pile of cash They have a board of directors that until recently has not pushed for further increases in market growth or stock appreciation. I say until recently, as our former Microsoft board of directors member, Value Act has been heavily accruing shares of Nintendo, and I've kept in touch with Mason Moffat as he's been acquiring. It's likely he will be pushing for more from Nintendo stock, which would create opportunities for us. Without that catalyst, I don't see an angle to near-term mutually agreeable merger of Nintendo and Microsoft, and I don't think a hostile action would be a good move. So we are playing a long game, but our board of directors has seen the full write-up on Nintendo and Valve, and they are fully supportive on either if the opportunity arises as am I. And then he just drops the bomb about how they're actually in fairly active mergers and uh, mergers and acquisition discussions with both ZeniMax and Warner Brothers Interactive. And how Phil said they he expects at least one of them to happen, if not both. And ah, oh, they missed out on Warner Brothers. I remember yeah. having those conversations back then and they'd be like, oh, oh wouldn't yeah. that be cool? But they did get Bethesda, right? Get Bethesda. But everybody here wants to focus on the Nintendo thing about mm-hmm. like, how dare you, Phil? How dare you? How I, <laughs> micro I don't know. You I know you have a lot to say about this, Scott. Go ahead. The floor is yours. <laughs> yes. the floor is They're yours. mad with me. They are mad with me because I apparently I you know I was supposed to be disgusted along with mm. them. I was supposed to be you know oh my god how dare he? And look, I get it. I get the Monopoly Bros. I, I get it. You know, like they're very upset. It, it, they feel like you see this, this proves it. This proves it. They just want to buy everything. They don't want to do anything. And to me, it's just like okay. First of all, you got to look at the context of what this was said, and also from a corporation standpoint you're going to aspire for many things, right? And and according to Phil, you know, he was like, this would be, you know, a good career move, so to speak. So I just look at it and it's very simple. You know, again, in the email, you can't do a hostile takeover, right? You can't sit there and just throw money at somebody and, and that's how it, how it works from an acquisition standpoint. It doesn't work like that. Nintendo would have to want to be acquired, right? And as we saw from a revenue standpoint right now, they're doing Fantastic. But what I want people to stop being emotional about is at the end of the day, this is business and we're in the console market, right? I'm from the era where Sega was running rampant. Turbo Graphics was running rampant with NEC. All these companies that were running rampant in their hay and even Nintendo themselves who came off some amazing consoles did have a Wii U era. Remember the Wii U era? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so yeah. people have to get out of the emotionality that something like this can never happen because anybody can fall on hard times. So what I'm trying to say is, look, this is something that he's aspiring to, career move. He doesn't think it's going to happen. He even says it in the email. You know what I'm saying? You know, look, I would think it would be good for, for both parties. But at the end of the day, Nintendo would have to want to be acquired, and we don't see that situation now. So I don't think this is any gotcha moment. I don't think there's this any, like, oh, my God. All corporations are going to aspire for something. You know what I'm saying? The same thing with Disney and the MCU. They want to want to aspire to acquire and get their IPs back, get Fox and all this other stuff, right? It's a matter of t- it takes two entities to want to agree. Someone has to want to be acquired for this to happen. So my thing is, bro, like if, if you're in a world where you're upset that corporations 
are going to want to acquire another corporation. I, I hate to break it to you, but that is the real world. That's that's what happens. So that's all I'm saying. It's just like I get it. You know, people are, are upset that that it, it, it's it's it, the mere thought of it. But again, there is situations. There are things that could happen in the future. And the way to me, the funniest part about all of this is like biding my time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like to me, it's like you're at home, you're a TV. Name a famous actress. Like, yeah, one day I'm gonna marry Holly Berry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you live, you know, you live at your, you know, live at your Taylor home. Taylor Swift. You live in a, you know, a studio apartment. You live, you know, what I mean? like again. You could say you can want to aspire. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm trying to say. So, again, I'm not with this, oh, my God, this is the evil. Bro, wake up. We're in a world where Sega became a third-party publisher. We're in, like, things can happen. Anything. We can't predict the future, but that's one of his things that he wants to aspire to. So that's pretty much all I got. It's not a big deal to me, and I guess people are upset that I, I'm supposed to be upset about this so you're supposed to be outraged yeah we're we're also in a situation where xbox is being investigated where they're Mm -hmm. being um they're having the microscope put on them for their business ventures or their intentions in business thank you Um, playstation and sony are not under they're not under court um right scrutiny right now uh so the the funny thing is, is if, if you think that Jim Ryan Thank doesn't you. make the same Thank kind you. of comments, Thank like you. maybe he doesn't say, oh yeah, it'd be great to, you know, maybe they do say it would be great to own Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think these are things that you would say, like, uh, you know, if you were not running a business and if mm-hmm. you're, if you were the head coach of a team, you would be looking out across the field and across the draft boards saying, I want them, 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 and them on my team. Exactly. I want these people on my team, and I want to have a killer team that nobody can touch. And it's all part of competition. Right. And, and I, just, uh, I just want to interrupt for one quick second, Cole. Mm-hmm. It's also, we know for a fact Sony was, had a bid on another publisher. That is Bethesda. Right. Mm-hmm. So, again, we got to cut out the emotionality because at the end yeah. of the day, these are corporations, Sony, all of them, they're corporate. They have lists of people they want to acquire and things that they want to do. Be- what, I'm going to tell you what the real issue is. here. The real issue is people are afraid because they know Microsoft's wallet is capable. That's what this is. Is it fear? There, a, is it fear? Of course it's fear because it, there's a reality that's like, oh, my God, that could happen. Right. That's what this is. Let's let's just call it what it is. That's because people have this selective morality with the games industry when it benefits the company that they like. Mm. That's all this is. So it's like just because one company shops at the dollar value menu and they can't theoretically go farther than another one. But you best believe if Sony had those resources, they would be in the same position looking at all of these things that they could acquire. That's why people can miss me with this fake concern of the industry. I'm not buying it. Is you only concerned when it's the company you don't like? That's what this mm-hmm. is. So let's just keep it a buck. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> it's a passionate I like that. topic for me. <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, yeah it's... I mean... Go ahead, Rand. Well, I was just going to say, listen, 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 okay? Mm-hmm. Let's take a look at the context of the situation here, right? It's 2020. They haven't acquired anybody yet, right? They're they're obviously looking. And if you're... We already know Microsoft is into Nintendo. They tried to buy them back when they got in in 2020, and Nintendo left them out of the building as they should, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're Phil and you're looking like, hey, what could be the biggest move? A career-defining moment for him because he's, he's the business. This isn't like... Oh well, career-defining moments should be games and innovation and all this. It's like no, he runs the business. Career-defining moments would be like, what is the best thing I can do to propel Xbox uh, revenue and the brand forward? And you mean to tell me like getting Nintendo wouldn't be that moment? Like if you went to if you went to PlayStation, you're like, hey, you want to buy Nintendo? I they would probably do hand flips. Jim Ryan would. Would be, of course, who wouldn't want as much as I don't like Nintendo, as much as I personally don't care for them, I recognize like when it comes to market share, mind share of just what Nintendo offers, they're unbeatable. Like they put out a Switch yep. that can't compete 
power wise with any console. It doesn't matter. They they sell more than anything. They have the most beloved IP in all of gaming with Mario. One of the they just literally put a movie out with Mario, and it was like it's like the biggest movie outside of Barbie this whole they, year, they out, right? They put out seven games that don't look as good as God of War or Gears yeah. Five, and they're still like way and, better games, yeah. way higher rated, sell ten and, times more. Uh, and people, unbelievable. and people talk about like Sony and their first party games and how much they sell the Spider-Mans, the God of Wars, but Sony's games don't touch the sales of Nintendo games. They ain't touching Zelda. Zelda did like 10 million in a week or 18 million in a month, whatever it was. Like Mario Kart 8 did like 40 million. Like uh, these numbers are ridiculous. Yesterday. It's Nintendo. <laughs> it, yeah. Like who wouldn't want Comcast probably wants them. You know, Comcast wants them in gaming. Like everybody wants Nintendo and it would be an absolute like huge significant earthquake changing like thing if if Xbox were to get them but you look at the time 2020 right August they haven't acquired anybody and then all of a sudden you get Bethesda okay that's a good that's a good thing but you know you're still like okay well we've talked to leadership team at Nintendo they don't want it Although our board of directors, they've seen the full write-up because we have write-ups in everybody. We've seen that list. Microsoft has write-ups in all these companies. You know, we, we, we talked about that. I mean, they request, didn't they request uh, COG? It was mm -hmm. the, your company that you want Xbox to acquire yeah. next. They were going to go after Sega, I believe. Yeah, in, what, what year was that? Was it 2019? or I forget what, whatever year it was. But mm -hmm. they had written up all these sort of things. All these companies all have these write-ups about potential things oh, that man. might happen, right? Mm -hmm. But as it went on, it was like, it doesn't look like Nintendo wants to sell. And Phil said they're not going to do a hostile takeover. Even though the board supports going after Nintendo or Valve if the opportunity ever arises, it's not going to happen because then Xbox went and got ABK. And you right. look at all the scrutiny that it, this thing ABK went under where it certainly seems like it barely passed through the CMA because they had to change yeah. up the whole acquisition where Ubisoft gets the streaming rights and the European yeah. commission was, was like, Oh my God, about, can you imagine if it was Nintendo? Yeah. Oh man. You think One of the, yeah. The Nintendo would be blocked by everybody. The FTC would block it. The CMA would block it. The, cause like you look at like, if you're blocking ABK and if Microsoft mm -hmm. were to get Nintendo, that means you're taking off one of the three main major play. Exactly. Yeah. So it would, it would hit all these things and it would basically be blocked by pretty much all the regulators. So it's, I, I it's, don't even think Nintendo would sell for any amount of money. That, no, I don't think so like, either. It would be like selling the golden goose. Um, there's no reason for Nintendo to even bother selling for 10 times over what they're, they're worth because they know for the perpetual, for like the, the rest of, our living days on planet earth as long as people play video games nintendo will always do really well they mm -hmm. they they push through the wii u like it was a right. small road bump and just continue to provide a great entertainment value to the world and mm -hmm. i know that you and i talk rand about how we don't play nintendo games i i have two switches in the house i don't even use them um but i just have such a massive respect for what they've done and I was a big fan uh, in the NES days, and I, I don't think they've changed much from the late 80s. They just continue to provide a great thing. And Phil can say, yeah, that would be a great get to marry Halle Berry one day or yeah. Taylor Swift. But he's just saying that, you know, it's like, it, and it's not buying Nintendo wouldn't be like the high watermark of someone's career. It would be that chart up in the conference room. It says, look at what the value of our platform did in this year because of purchases and moves we made in the business. Mm -hmm. That would be what made, uh, you know, right. Peter Moore or whoever is in charge made their big moments. Um, right. That's what makes their career. Yeah, and I, I just want to add on two parts. One, from the practical standpoint, even if it's not an acquisition, right, and it's just like a partnership, we got to be honest. And I'm a Nintendo Switch owner, right? They have one of the worst online infrastructures I've ever seen in gaming. Yeah. Like their friend list is a glorified stalker list. You can't talk to anybody. You can't communicate. You can't send a message. You can't do a party chat. You know, when you want to play Splatoon, you got to get a, a two pieces of cans and a string and, and and try to see that device. Like, come on, let's be real. Like, so you mean to tell me that yeah. they 
couldn't benefit from at minimum a partnership with Microsoft on the back end with Azure. Like we again, we got to take the emotionality out of it. And and again, I've been in these meetings. You see, people who talk about Carl oh, doesn't care about. I've been in these rooms where control a next generation game that I knew could not run on the Nintendo Switch. I was there in E3. I was 2018. They debuted. I'm in there with Sam Lake and and all these guys. Guess who was in there? Who? Reggie Fizeme. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why is Reggie fils here for one of the most powerful games that I know the Switch can't run? But guess what happened like a year or two later? The Nintendo started fiddling and experimenting with cloud. And you can run control on cloud on the, what you, on, on, the, on the Switch. And then we know for a fact that huh. Nintendo and, and Microsoft's relationship has been cozy with Doug Bowser and Reggie and these guys. Because guess what? Remember Ori came over there? Remember Xbox gamers were mad? Mm -hmm. Xbox was like, yo, this relationship seems one-sided, right? Nintendo's getting on. So again, take the emotionality out of it. There is a relationship there. And it's been growing. Guess who got a 10-year deal from Call of Duty? Who? Nintendo. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. So again... People got to miss me with this fake concern and this fake monopoly stuff because the relation, the seeds are there. And then also last thing I'm going to say, where is this energy for Tencent? Where mm. is this energy for the number one gaming company buying up everything? And then on top of that, changing the way games are made. Oh, you can't have these type of political statements on. Oh, no, you can't have any type of a game, a game with choice, Mass Effect, uh, different sexuality stuff. You can't have that with, with that. Oh, no, not over there with that. Well, the Tencent argument is those games remain multi-plat you know if playstation that. or xbox buys them then somebody I misses that. out that has a very loud voice but the reality is they have their fingers and tendrils and, and stakes on mm -hmm. a lot of things and they could take things over and this is from a foreign entity so again we have to be honest about what our concerns are if we really talk about the concerns of gaming Let's be balanced and let's be honest. That's all I'm saying. And look at the signs when there is a relationship there between two companies. There is a relationship there. Now, the funny thing is, the last thing I'll say, I don't know if it's going to be a relationship now after this business is out. <laughs> because I don't know how Nintendo feels that, you know, maybe Phil was scheming a little bit. I'll be honest about that part. You know, so I think that part is absolutely hilarious. But I do think some, some tendrils are there. Some, some signs are there that the relationship is good. Yeah, I just, I, I sort of think people are just like, they look at this and they think this is like a recent email and they're like, oh my God, they're about to buy Nintendo. They're buying ABK. They're buying Bethesda. But to me, when I read this email, it's it's basically Phil saying, yeah, it's a good idea, but it's not going to happen. And it's probably right. never going to happen. Right. And it's just, but people lose their mind because, you know, they, they get up on this whole thing. Like, look, there is people literally celebrating the last couple days about the potential of Microsoft leaving the entire gaming business, mm -hmm. right? Because there, there was a, you know, some of this FTC deposition will, uh, you know, Phil talked about in these questions, uh, essentially that, uh, you know, that if game pass doesn't grow, uh, if they don't grow game pass, uh, past console, like, cause they want a hundred million game pass subscribers by 2030. They want to be making $38 billion by 2030 and they really need to grow Game Pass on PC and cloud first gamers. And then if they don't do that, then maybe the business needs to change. Uh, maybe they would as exit the business, the, the whole business essentially, right? And obviously you need mm -hmm. to like take a look at them. Like, sure, okay, you have a plan. And if you don't meet those plans, maybe leadership like Satya might be like, hey, we tried. Uh, we need to do something else, but also the context of he's literally in an FTC deposition about the ABK stuff saying, Hey, if this doesn't happen, uh, we will leave the industry. You're stifling competition, but people seem to forget that. But the point I'm trying to make is literally you have people celebrating on social media about Xbox leaving the business, which would be God awful. And I also think Xbox shouldn't buy Nintendo because you're essentially buying up one of the three console manufacturers to only have two. And that's awful, right? So you have these people celebrating potentially somebody leaving the business 
Like it's like, oh, we told you, you know, Game Pass is unsustainable and Xbox. N- not to mention when there was a little chart out there about how Xbox was actually making money. In fact, maybe even making more money than PlayStation profit-wise. People lost their damn minds and bullied the person who wrote the article into taking it down because it didn't fit into with a lot of the narratives. Granted, the chart compared three different sort of things, whatever. But it, like you, you have people going from. Xbox is going to leave the industry and we're so happy to see it. And then to cry. And then it's like, well, are you no. Implying, are you implying there's a double standard? There is, for? there is a double standard. There's 100% a double standard when it comes to all this stuff. Right. Uh, with how it's reported. Like, Hey, everybody demanded Xbox do better. I mean, it was one of my conversations with Phil. Not like, like we, that. Yeah, you can't do it like this. You have to do it the pure way. You have to do it the way Sony does it. You have to do it with or granted <laughs> growth. Otherwise, it doesn't count. And you can't use your advantage. You, you can't. You can't do this. You can't buy a publisher that's off an image. That's just, They're literally buying up the industry. Yeah. They're literally buying. You know, they say it all the time. They're literally oh, buying man. up publishers. Like, uh, yeah, okay. So Because Microsoft yeah. has this really, you know, uh, this this plan of being the leader in, in video games by 2030. And I'll be straight with you guys. I don't see that happening <laughs> as much as I love Xbox. And as much as I like Phil, I don't see Xbox leading shit. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that might be harsh, <laughs> but I just don't. But the point, but the point of the matter is it's that North star, right? As a corporation, this is what you aspire to. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. No, 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 right? no. I agree it, with you, right? you make your plan. I, I see the word lead in a different I agree way. With you, I agree. But people have to get that out of my, that mind. Like that's what it's called a North star. All corporations do this. I, again, you sitting at your house, you're one day I'm going to marry her. Like that. all companies do this. that. That's just how it is. But again, people, the, the, the emotionality of this and, and, and that's the part that's sad because people really expose themselves because they only feel that way again when it's the company or the corporation they don't like yeah right i mean yeah i mean i don't i don't see xbox leading as far as being ahead in console sales ever again uh i also don't see them selling i also don't even really this is crazy to say i don't see them outselling the competition in games because just like that chart that they made Derek from tweak town take down through absolute harassment uh, as they do xbox runs business a completely different way that you cannot say wow i wonder if so if xbox doesn't sell consoles maybe they'll sell more games it's like no where have you been they're putting games on game pass they're they're going to have subscribers that they're going to be making okay so they're making what a minimum of three billion dollars in revenue, and they're like, "It's not profit, though. Where's the profit?" And I'm like, "Well, I mean, Phil's already told you that they're that they are making a profit on Game Pass. So you know, they're not spending three billion to make three billion, and Game Pass isn't an isolated vacuum as well. So when you say, when Phil says lead, of course he aspires to lead and be number one. But I think what they are actually doing is they're guiding." They're leading the way to where gaming is moving. Subscription services, letting you play how and the which way you want, having access to your games back and forth from a handheld to a TV to a console to a PC. Like, that's amazing. I can't believe that we don't celebrate that as gamers, that the Xbox platform has given us more choice than ever before in all of the 50 years of mainstream gaming. The Xbox platform is giving you more choice and more ways to play your game in the best value with the best preservation. I'll say it. Xbox is the best at preservation. They have uh, like 600 games that no one else has even bothered to bring compatible from the, the Gen 7 and Gen 8 era uh, and, and Gen 6 era or you know, whatever it is. Xbox yeah. is doing all this stuff and they've done it by not making you buy the console. And... I think that's a really good guidance in the way gaming should be moving forward. I don't think PlayStation has to put their games on PC day and date. Well, I don't think they, they're going to anyway. They're eventually going to get there. Well, where I mean, Helldivers, which comes games. out on February 8th, is day and date with PC. All yeah. those games and service titles will be, but I think that uh, in the near future, they're just going to shorten that gap. They're going to 
they they realized that six months to one year is your life cycle for a brand new game that comes out. Like if Horizon Forbidden West launches, you have six months to a year to sell it, and then it plateaus out, you know. And then that's when they get ready to go on to PC. And we've yet to see that, but yeah, it's just a different business model. And I think it should be celebrated what Xbox is doing to let people play. Uh, Jason V says options are bad cult. And then he puts a couple funny little, uh, little pictures there. Yeah, I know it's, it's, it is interesting. Um, when people say we want Xbox to die, like they want Xbox is ruining gaming. When I feel like Xbox is, um, being in third place has put them in an advantageous position for us as consumers. I think they Ooh. offer such a great value. Yeah, and it was also the only way to acquire who they acquired, right? Because they were so far behind everybody that you could acquire Bethesda and ABK. And the only mm-hmm. the only issues are cloud gaming, which is a market that doesn't even exist, right? Because if right. you were right. any higher, if you were a Nintendo or Sony, that might look a little bit anti-competitive. Mm-hmm. Um, and even when you like, you look at what Xbox, because Xbox and Phil is like, we're not done acquiring. And we did see that there's layoffs at Embracer. Uh, they're willing to divest mm-hmm. studios and sell them. And Crystal Dynamics laid off some people. And I'm just like, hopefully ABK is done real soon because please get in there and get Crystal Dynamics and Idols Montreal away from Embracer. Please. Yes. Please. Because they even want to sell Gearbox. But, you know, coming to the CMA stuff, the other, the other news that broke today because it was an actual, like, huge... Yeah. Um, week for Xbox. Let me let me bring this up. Is that the CMA after all this time? And oh man, I still remember when everybody thought they were going to approve it the first time, and then out of nowhere, they're like, "No, we're blocking this shit." And everybody's like, "Are, are you serious?" Um, basically, that uh, the CMA has pre-approved the deal. Uh, because last yeah. night, uh, Lulu she tweeted. Uh, let me find the tweet. She tweeted. Um. She tweeted out, the CMA's preliminary approval is great news for Activision Blizzard's future with Microsoft. We're glad the CMA has responded positively to the solutions for Microsoft has proposed, and together we'll continue to work towards completing the regulatory process. And the CMA themselves, uh, they put out a tweet with an article and said they have an update. And if you go to this, uh, they talk about, um, they say earlier this year, the CMA blocked Microsoft from acquiring the whole of Activision due to concerns that the deal would harm competition in the cloud uh, in the UK. After the deal was blocked, Microsoft submitted a restructured transaction in August for the CMA to review. Under that new deal, Microsoft will not purchase the cloud gaming rights held by Activision, which will instead be sold to the independent third party, Ubisoft, before the deal is completed. The prior sale of cloud gaming rights will establish Ubisoft as the key supplier of content to cloud gaming services, re- replicating the role that Activision would have played uh, as an independent player. And they go on to say that the CMA considers the restructured deal makes important changes that substantially addresses the concerns that set out in relation to the transaction earlier this year. Um, so basically, they also say the CMA has now opened a consultation until until the 6th of October on Microsoft pr- pr- proposed remedies. So it seems like right now that uh, they're sort of pre-approving it. And maybe it might be completely done by uh, October sixth, um, which you know. I mean, what else? What else do you want from this week of Xbox with next gen consoles <laughs> leaking, refreshes, Game Pass stuff? Like you know, we even talk about Larian and the whole second rate thing, uh, and how people were taking that as an insult, and rate. how you know, like <laughs> all the sort, of, and it just kind of caps off with yeah, ABK looks to be finished. And mm. it kind of goes back to what you were saying, Cog, about mm. smells like fear on the streets. Yeah. You yeah, know, it's, 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 it's a lot of stuff going around. You know what I'm saying? We got to talk about it. Right. So it's just like, yeah, bro, I, I'm with you. I think that, um, you know, this was my prediction. And, and I told people during the, during the talk times of 2022 that I, I stood on my square. I said, the ABK deal was most likely going to go through. Now, I'm not going to say I wasn't nervous. <laughs> I'm not going to say it was looking spooky. I'm not going to say that I was worried about the political aspect of why the CMA blocked it. And, you know, obviously the UB, Ubisoft getting involved kind of looked weird to me. And then when I saw the October date, I was just like, man, what if they just stalling them out and just still block it? <laughs> you know, and there's a part of me that, you know, because again, 
I think in logic and reason. And, and to me, you know, them being the third place, they, they didn't even block it because of them even thinking Microsoft, they blocked it clearly on cloud, which I thought was interesting. And, um, you know, Microsoft now has taken the necessary steps and obviously got Ubisoft involved. So we now we're at the point with the preliminary, you know, agreement. And what I think is, again, my, my main point was that if this goes through, this is a tremendous boost in the arm. Because now, like I said, with Starfield kind of setting off the tone of this new era of Xbox, you know, these quality games, these zeitgeist games, that's making people buy a console, it's making people subscribe to Game Pass, that's doing all this tremendous engagement, you have a Forza coming. We talked about the year of 2023. Now you get the shot in the arm that is ABK. Now, look, I have long been retired from the COD days. I used to be a COD bro. I used to be Modern Warfare. I used to be there. But I understand the significance. We know there are those dudes, the casual guy, that all they do is buy the one game, whether it's COD, NBA 2K, or Madden, and that's what they're playing for the year. So all I think about is that missing base, that missing, you know, gamer that may have been on PlayStation because they had the marketing, and most people, they just see the marketing rights, they just assume that's all you can get it. Now you throw Call of Duty in Game Pass. Now you package that with a Series S. Now you get ABK's lineup slowly infused into Game Pass for 2024 because they're still operating as separate entities right now. And But to your point, Rand, where I do think you're right, is that they probably, if they're able to close it, at least market and get that revenue from Sony this year from a Call of Duty game You know they can announce. So I think this is this is... This is where things can change. And, and I, I've always been consistent with, with King on the sense that if they get into that quarterly cadence, right, of all these big, you know, AAA games, and even let's just say we be conservative. Let's just say they are not, they're all Starfields. They're all, you know, 80 something metas, right? But they're launching in Game Pass and launching this. It becomes overwhelming, you know, to the competition. It really does. So I think this is a game changer. I think if this goes down, this is really going to put Xbox in a competitive spot. Yes, corporate cog is talking. <laughs> you know, <something laughs> like, uh, this is corporate cog all day. You know, I'm, I'm always going to talk corporate at some level. So it's like, I, I just think of it, it, the big picture. This is huge. I don't care about cod like that no more, but I understand the fact. But I will say this. You put COD for free, technically it's not free, but free 99 on Game Pass, COG is going to Ooh. try it. COG will be getting in there, seeing what's going on with Search and Destroy and all that. So again, you know, I, I just look at it as this is where the avalanche, avalanche starts to happen. And it could get scary. And I, I've talked to, you know, Colin, I've talked to a lot of PlayStation fan base. And, you know, I've, I've been told, you know, maybe two big AAA games a year from them, right? And, and, and then some people don't like the direction that they're going with live service. Some people don't like the, you know, the, the, the cadence right now. So, again, I'm, I'm not saying doom and gloom for Sony, but this is about to be a competitive generation. And this was one of the moments. This is one of the inflection points that I see that it could really change with their plan and their strategy. I love it, Cog. I love it. Yeah. You, you always have a good viewpoint on, on the things that are happening. I mean, like... This is a big cha- I mean this is a big game changer for Xbox. I mean the getting mobile. Everybody likes to focus on the Call of Duty thing, which is what Sony was so gung ho on, but in reality when you look at the leaked documents Threatened. that Microsoft is like we need mobile. We need mobile really bad. And this gives them king, this gives them like Call of Duty on mobile and the things that you can do to try to break up the duopoly of like the Google and Apple phones and stuff like that. And, you know, you get Blizzard for PC, you get all the Game Pass stuff that you can add with Call of Duty. Like, this is a a significant change, significant moment for Xbox whenever this does close, right? Because let's say it closes in two weeks. You know, they're going to celebrate this somehow. You're going to have some sort of round table. You're going to have some games drop on on Game Pass. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be, you're talking about revenue. You're talking about the injection of revenue. There's a new Call of Duty coming out this year that is going to count under Xbox's revenue. I mentioned before how in their slides, they want to grow to 100 million Game Pass subs by 2030 and $38 billion in revenue by 2030. And Xbox currently has about 15 and a half, 16, right? Mm -hmm. 
You add ABK, which is around eight and nine. So now you're getting up to like 24, 25 billion, which is what PlayStation's at. So now you're right there, even with them. And you're going to have the marketing rights for Call of Duty and other Blizzard stuff. You want to grow PC Game Pass, which they missed their targets on. Uh, they wanted 10 million for 2022 and they only got three, right? And it's just like, when you talk about the biggest move Xbox could make, sure, it would have been Nintendo. If Nintendo was available, that would have been the move. But if you're talking like step down, like it's ABK because it because an- right. it answers all of a lot of Xbox's uh, question marks and things that they weren't doing. Like, you know, you talk about Starfield and Starfield having, you know, 10 million players in two weeks. How many million players play Callfield, uh, like Call of Duty, immediately? How many of those millions of players will decide to finally decide to Game Pass to get that game? Not maybe not necessarily this year's Call of Duty, mm-hmm. but future Call of Duties, or all the Call of Duties will be on Game Pass, or all the b- b- Blizzard releases that will be on Game Pass and stuff like that to grow that service because we know that service has been mm-hmm. stagnant, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and just the marketing itself, we always complain about mm-hmm. Xbox's marketing Oof. is kind of, eh, but like AB. Activision always goes hard with some of that stuff. Oh, and you- not to cut you, Rand, just for a second, because I don't want to lose this thought before I forget, is you said a great point about marketing. I talk to esports lawyers all the time. The, the Call of Duty esports scene and just the, the visibility of having Xbox hardware now switched out, PlayStation stuff switched out with Xbox hardware, and then being the de facto place that where you're quote-unquote supposed to play Call of Duty is huge. Huge. It, it, it reminds me of also how, how Evo is. Like Evo right now, PlayStation holds Evo. So the fighting community, assu- they, they naturally mentally associate Sony with that. They will have the number one IP with complete marketing and brand association. That is tremendous. Sorry to interrupt you. Well, yeah. So then, then now I think about okay, you're gonna have you're gonna own COD, and now I think about next year because who knows the plans? Maybe they can. But then I think about oh yeah, there's gonna be two new Xbox consoles next year, right? You're going to have the Series X refresh and the Series S refresh with the brand new controller that you can potentially market alongside a brand new Call of Duty and how powerful that tool might be uh, to get people aware of what Game Pass can do. Because that's one of the other things. It's like, and I talk to people who aren't really gamers, like my sister, who's like, who who was like, oh my God, Hogwarts Legacy. I'm a huge Hogwarts fan. I like yep. want to play that, but then you, but she has no idea what game pass is. Right. But her husband does play call of duty every year. So it's one of those things where it's like, now you're going to have people probably marketed call of duty with game pass. And now people might be like, Oh, game pass. Okay. Because I think there's a lot of people moving into game pass right now because of Starfield, And then they're probably wondering what's next. What's the next game I'm playing? What's the next game coming from Xbox and stuff? And mm-hmm. if it's not there, maybe they, they bounce, which is why it's always important to have games coming all the time. This is going to be a game changer, a literal game changer for Xbox and the industry. Uh, when you, when, and yeah, I mean like some people aren't going to like it. Some people, they don't want X. I, I said this to you last night, Cog, some people, they don't want Xbox to go away. But they want Xbox to remain last place, and they want Xbox to remain a laughing stock. They don't want Xbox to to get Why? any st- because they do because because the, they look at the PS4 gen and how great it was and how dominant the PS4 was, and it was great because you could talk about Spider Man's and the God of Wars and how amazing PlayStation was while also laughing at the but misfortune does, of does Xbox. Xbox. Have to be a laughing stock to enjoy when playstation's doing its best I, I don't get that because because some people can't like both and a lot like, of this youtube so- stuff it's it's either one or the other you can't enjoy yeah. xbox and enjoy playstation right. Right. it's like you, you have to be one and, and for the other so and i know that people you know, will always automatically call me a console war fanboy and like i i play on all of the crap and i'll play on pc or whatever whatever right but like I'm also a Seattle Mariners baseball fan. And if somebody tells me that the Toronto Blue Jays are doing well, I'm like, awesome. I really like Bo Bichette. You know, like, I don't, I don't understand the, the crazy tribalism. Of course, we make our jokes here and there. But you have to understand that if, if Phil was like, you know what? We tried. Satya is not going to back me anymore. We're going to put out the next games over the next three or four years that we have in the works. We're just going to sign it off and Xbox will be no more. The games industry would be ruined. PlayStation would continue to jack up prices. I mean, what would happen if Xbox left the scene? 
Would would it be okay? Maybe it would be all right. Maybe there'd be people who just who would just no, have such I think, a great time I think not having Xbox in the scene. Some people would just leave, so there'd be less people buying games, less money coming in. PlayStation. I mean, I don't know. Does PlayStation even view Xbox that much as competition? They just raised prices of their subscription service and their multiplayer offerings by. Uh, twenty dollars, and it doesn't really seem like they care. I, I don't know. Maybe they're just like, all right, now we can raise prices to eighty dollars a game, or whatever. But you know, with and but the thing was, they were it was so easy for them to get third party deals like the Final Fantasy Sixteens and yeah. the Seven mm-hmm. Remakes, because they knew Xbox couldn't offer what PlayStation offered, because they knew Square Enix would demand more money from Xbox to get those games than what they would demand from PlayStation. Isn't that what Phil said in the Yeah, court that's essentially hearing? Yeah, and, and and he even said in the in the FTC deposition that basically how PlayStation one of the ways PlayStation grows their business is to get Xbox out of the business. Yeah, exactly. Right? So yeah, I mean, but that's the thing is I think PlayStation fans for so long had like, oh no, we want Xbox around because it maybe keeps PlayStation on us, but we we want them to be a laughing stock. We want to be able to take a look at their fans and take a look at what they're doing and laugh and say, ah, oh, 60 meta, ha ha ha. Oh, look at those crappy games, ha ha ha. And just being like, mm-hmm. flex their superiority, like, oh, you know, we're we're part of PlayStation Nation, right? Even though it's just like a, a console you buy, it's not like it. Some people act like it's a cool kids club, cons- country like, club. The, like there's <laughs> like yeah, like there you need to have this like green jacket to walk in. You need oh, to know that you need jacket. to know like the handshake to get to be Shoot open up the, the door, right? But but now it's like no, like well you get these things and you got the games, you know, and you you have the, you have the prestige and you have the power and things might change. Like uh, some people don't like it. I mean, the fact that there, people were bitching about Starfield not coming to their console, you haven't seen yeah. anything yet. If a Doom skips a console, or an Elder Scrolls skips their console, or something else uh, doesn't yeah. come, or like an Indiana Jones, like God forbid, it's it's something like that's been there for a while, and like what? It's not coming to my console, right? So, mm-hmm. I mean. <clears throat> What else do you really say about that? We'll, we'll obviously we'll have more to say because there's there's things about like what the future of ABK will be like. We'll have to save that for future yeah. Xbox Twos or whatever. Um, I do know that we're almost approaching three hours, yeah. and I know I know you had a uh, had a hard stop, and I know Colt, you're sick, and you were only going to stay for an hour, but you stayed for yeah. almost three. I had to give you so, some balls, man. I yeah. was having too much fun, man. And Colt, so, yeah, this is fun. Yeah. So, Kag, I, I thank you so much Yo. for being here. Um, let the people know. I mean, let the people know where they can find you. You can find you, Cog in the ILP on Sundays and in the realm yeah. with Maddie uh, in the Dukes. Yes sir. So. yes, sir. Realm of the Dukes, realm of the Lords. Um, first of all, Rand, man, you're the homie. Always love when I get the call. Really appreciate you. And Xbox Two is definitely one of my favorites. You know what I mean? Hopefully, Jazz comes back and we get to hear that that the beautiful accent and what he's got to think uh, about these topics. Because I'm dying to hear that. You guys make a great duo, and of course, Colt East with Morning Gameplay. Morning the Gameplay. X and C, seven p.m. <laughs> I love hanging out with Colt. Hanging out with Colt, real person in real life is real fun. So salute to Colt. He's a good dude. Regardless, of, he, he a little spicy on Twitter. I'm mm, working very, on him. I'm very. working on him. Well, yeah. you know, you know, it's it's got he's got Gaz, the evil, the devil yeah, on yeah, his like the, left shoulder. Evil like, show. Come on, tweet it, tweet it, you know. Yeah, I, gotta, I gotta say, I mean, being able to hang out with these people that we watch on podcasts yeah. uh, or we we follow their channels, being able to meet these people in person has been uh, unbelievably amazing. And I was uh, walking around PAX with the Lords and they were all wearing their, their Iron Lord shirts and Ow. watching people walk up, Rand. Uh-huh. Watching what I thought were strangers would walk up and go, yo, Lords, Cog, King. Like, uh, they were they were giants. And it was so awesome to see these people. Because when you're at PAX, it's a smorgasbord of people. Yeah. You're not going to run into a lot of Xbox fans like that easily. Mm-hmm. Uh, or or podcast fans because the people are there from all over the place mm-hmm. and uh, the people coming up and saying shout out to the lords so yeah, um, love. it's, it's love. amazing it is much love nah, I appreciate you Cole and uh, yeah man I appreciate you Ran and again you know me at Lord Cognito on Twitter every Sunday is the Lord's Day check us out we did an emergency podcast uh, on Tuesday talking about a, a lot of this stuff but um reason why <laughs> is because. Peter Moore Peter is returning. Moore, yeah. Peter Moore, the legend, you know what I'm saying, from uh, the Dreamcast era, you know, Xbox, EA, Unity, you name it. And um, we want to pick his brain. We, wanna, we didn't get a chance to finish up some of the thoughts that we had 
you know, during his tenure, but also we want to get his thoughts on, you know, what's going on now, right? As a person who was the head of both Sega and, and, and Xbox at one point, to hearing, hearing all, these new, all this news that's going in the industry, what's his thoughts on that? Please check that out. That'll be 1 p.m. Eastern, of course. I'm in the realm of the Dukes with my homie Mr. Matty plays on Defining Duke. Go check that out. We we have thoughts. <laughs> Doing a little a couple of victory laps on a little, maybe a little bit of I told you so mm-hmm, a certain mm-hmm. prediction. But you know, we're just having fun. And um, yeah, go check that out. Go to support lordsofgaming.net. We we're out there, you know, my brother Gene and a couple of our writers out at to- uh, Tokyo Game Show right now. If you see the articles, please, the retweets really help. All that stuff really helps us. And again, had a ton of fun salute to the chat y'all was fun even if some of y'all disagree with me we, we was having fun and we was being respectful <laughs> <laughs> so i love you but i do gotta go rand you the homie this was a lot of fun thank you brother yeah, thank you for being here cog and yeah, uh you know. colt i know you're not feeling well and you stayed a lot longer than i thought um i'm assuming you want to take off too right yeah yeah i'll go i'm probably because i still got super chats until... i need to read and i gotta get through yeah the patreon mm-hmm. questions and i know colt, colt wants to go uh race in hawaii with the crew oh my gosh you know? that game is so cool no i mean it's it's such a laid back good time uh with you on the show ran i love being on podcasts with you and you don't need us around to run the show anyway as you guys will see when when cog and i bounce that ran can hold his own um no. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited for everything. I'm glad that things are picking up and we have a lot to look well, forward to. Well, you got a lot to, and... to talk to with a uh, middle aged game guy on X and C on mm-hmm. Monday. Yeah, yeah. The dude's been playing Lies of Peas and playing Starfield. Finally got him to blow the dust off the Xbox. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, he's a big he's a big PlayStation <laughs> console gamer. So um you can find me at Colt Eastwood. It's one word on Twitter. X. We'll do the X thing with my arms. And um <laughs> As well as uh, YouTube, where I'll have to pick up and start making videos once once I get my voice back and I don't sound so co- congested. <laughs> That's how I feel when I'm talking. I just feel like I can talk like this with my congestion. <laughs> but um, oh, much love to you guys. Here I'm gonna go. take off and uh, right, boys. It's thanks so much, Rand, and shout out to your chat and your yeah. and your your audience, man. All right, we'll thank you guys. You Cole, Catch you later. Enjoy your nap. All right, later, Cog, guys. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, brother. All right, later, guys. Later, guys. All right, now it's just me. I'm all by my lonesome, and we got to finish up some some super chats and uh, get some Patreon questions and maybe even some other stuff. So I left off with uh, Joshua B, who says, "Does Xbox have a hard time finding these Zygeist games for Game Pass? We found out they skipped on Genshin and now Baldur's Gate three. Something like Party Animals is doing all right, but nowhere near the impact of even a Fall Guys PlayStation Plus de- debut. Well, it's always hard to pick out games that might." do good and even larian said that everybody misjudged baldur's gate 3 so it's not necessarily on xbox you know they worth five million obviously that would be it'd be different um and i did see that that email where they were like hey it'd be 300 million dollars for jedi survivor and like 250 million dollars for suicide squad you know big games cost a lot of money um but this isn't the first time that xbox has missed out on stuff i mean there's that very uh old uh one where basically xbox passed on grand theft auto 3 exclusivity back in the day you'll find these sort of things from playstation nintendo and xbox that games that are were certifiable hits were passed up on because you know who who really knows what's going to take off so but i do i do think like yeah some of the zygot games for game pass like i do think they need more triple a games from third parties but i don't think those games are coming because i don't think third parties want their games day one in game pass so it'll be up for xbox to fill that gap and if they can get you know uh games like party animals or uh other games like liza p or payday uh into the service they just need consistently really good games like a city skylines 2 you know necessarily i mean it would be great to have something like alan wake 2 day one but that's doesn't seem like that's gonna happen uh bt maverick says Here's Jez's money for the second ABK denial bet. It was well worth the double, triple, reverse jinx. He told me to tell Rand, don't use it all on Costco hot dogs and to get a better alarm clock with it. Thank you guys for everything. Yeah, uh, oversleeping that one show is really going to bite me in the ass. Uh, but I've actually never been to Costco, and I can't wait to talk to Jez about all this stuff when he comes back next week because, I, I mean, He's gone. I, I usually talk to him every day, and I have no idea what he thinks. 
So Joshua B says, will Xbox take leak feedback into account from decisions now into next gen? I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, I think some of the stuff is probably too locked in, like the refresh consoles. Maybe maybe they take pricing into account. I don't really think the next gen stuff, they'll take what what people say here into account. They're going to do what you know is, is right for their business and is right you know along those lines. So no, I don't I don't think they'll take fan feedback into account for some of that stuff. Doctor Strange Love says, "Do you guys think Xbox will copy Sony and do a detachable disc drive for the new Series X? Q? Also, shout out to Lord Cogmito the Goat. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you figure if there was a disc drive, maybe it would be a detachable one. Maybe it would be in the documents somewhere." And it really wasn't. And maybe it's something they could produce. Although maybe Xbox just really wants everything to be all digital. Like, I know the cynical person could be like, well, they want to lock all their customers in. So if you're on Xbox and you're buying games and you're digital, you're pretty much locked in. You're not really going to go to PlayStation, at least primarily, because all your previous games that you purchased are on this console. So they may feel it's better for their business to be completely digital and offer that where they feel like not having a physical option doesn't really matter. And maybe that's a decision that bites them in the ass. Maybe that's a decision where very much like 2013 where PlayStation was like, we're keeping everything the same. And Xbox was like, we're changing everything and we're doing DRM and all this sort of stuff. Just PlayStation keeping it simple and what people knew really hammered Xbox this gen, that gen. And potentially, if now that PlayStation sees this, and maybe they're like, well, maybe they're not planning on doing a physical thing, Xbox. All PlayStation has to do is offer a detachable disk drive, and they can just keep on. And I don't really think there's ever really going to be a way that Xbox outsells PlayStation and consoles anyways, so maybe it doesn't really matter. Maybe it doesn't matter that Xbox isn't going to offer physical discs because... Xbox is more than a console. They're everywhere. They're PCs. They're TVs. They're the cloud. So maybe it doesn't matter in that regard, but PlayStation might just be like, well, we'll just keep it the way everybody knows. So if you want physical games, this is the you get a PlayStation. I don't know. Uh, Hindsight with Hustle says, how about games that are delisted that you can't buy anymore, like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Spider-Man, Ultimate, etc.? That's why I still buy physical games. Indeed, but I mean, if you bought them digitally you could still be able to download them, right? So, I mean, I, I get that, though. Like, if they're delisted and you didn't buy them, the only way you can buy them or play them is through a physical game. But if you did buy them digitally, you'd just be able to download them. Uh, Big Afro Man, he says, Colin on Sacred Symbols recently said the leak emails on Game Pass Prefis proves his point that Game Pass is unsustainable. What do you guys think? Uh, I don't think so, because I don't think those uh, prices were exactly what they were it was just what, what Xbox thought it might take to get those games, and they, they didn't get really any of those games. And, I mean, Phil said that Xbox is a profitable business. He's charged with running a profitable business, and they do have, like, some margin of in the low digits of being profitable. So, I mean, the Xbox business overall is profitable, and Phil says, you know, Game Pass is profitable. So whether it's a profitable by, by a dollar or by $500 million, um... It, I don't know. I, I don't think... I think some people want it to be unsustainable for their narrative that they've been pushing for a long time. They want it for Xbox to, to be bleeding money because that's something they've been pushing for a while that nobody likes Xbox, nobody buys games, and Game Pass is bleeding money. And it, it really fits like, oh, well, see, I told you so. But that doesn't really seem to be the truth of the matter, though. Uh, Stay High says, fact is our kids are the target. They don't care about physical, only us old heads. That is true. Uh, the younger generation is going to grow up, and uh, they basically don't care about physical. So it's only old people like us. Brendan says, what a show on this momentous day. Xbox catalog is about to get insane. The ABK deal is finally over, but I'm still not over Cobb. Cog supple thighs. Oh, man, it's too bad he was not here for, for this. That's funny. Supple thighs. Meat Puppet says, do you think an Xbox... is?" Do you think an Xbox he's going to do a handheld like the Ally? It's digital, pick and pull off the cloud. Um, I mean, judging from that list, it wasn't in scope. I think they're just going to partner with handheld providers 
Now, that's not to say they wouldn't have a handheld maybe for next generation. You know, uh, maybe they build their own for next gen, but it doesn't really seem like we'll see one until that point. So uh, it's up in the air. Jesse says, ABK deal going through should be enough to keep Xbox hardware around for at least one more gen. Andy says, this show sucks. I dislike it. I dislike it. I dislike it. Take my money. You obviously need it. You know, well, I appreciate you sending me money, even though apparently the show sucks, you know, but why would you watch something you don't dislike? I don't watch stuff I don't dislike. I value my time, right? Uh, but thank you. If you guys are enjoying the show, make sure you hit the like button and uh, subscribe. Help us get to uh, 100K much quicker. Appreciate it. Everybody's still here. Sin Vendetta, our buddy, says, Wow, can't believe Rand brought up Scalebound himself. Crazy. Well, it had to be mentioned somehow, right? Jesse says, Xbox is putting out a lot of new IPs, which would be impacted by COVID much harder than sequels, which is all Sony has been doing this generation. They did mention previously, Matt Booty did say that new IPs, would it be impacted more than like sequels and stuff? God Emperor Sof- Sofa King says, I mean, Major Nelson did take a trip at Nintendo. Dead Planet says, do you guys worry that Xbox's 2024 lineup is solid and varied, but not containing any real Earth-moving titles? Lots of A and B tier, but no real S tier. I don't care what you what you say, Dead Planet, because Hellblade 2 is S tier to me, and we don't know their full list. We know there's unannounced games. Could be a Forza Horizon 6, and like Forza Horizon is, uh, you know, I think you classify as S tier. So, I mean, I, I guess it depends on what your definition of S tier versus A and B tier. Because, I mean, if you're thinking like Starfield's S tier, but like Hellblade's an A tier. To me, Hellblade's an S tier. Especially if like we've seen games when they get, you know, the Metacritic is really high and critics love it. That can push a game from an A tier to an S tier. Like, obviously everybody misjudged Larry and Baldur's Gate. And people were thinking that was like an A tier, B tier game. But as soon as that game came out and the reviews are what they were and people were loving it, suddenly Baldur's Gate 3 is an S tier game. So, yeah, reviews, you know, in that situation might matter. Wagerman, he says, my fave three voices of the community with no midget upgrade. Think Xbox taking a page from Nintendo? Outside our bubble, power doesn't matter. Games do. I mean, it's possible. I mean, that could be something they talk about next gen. With, with their hybrid stuff. So who, who really knows yet? We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Me Puppet all says, are we sure that Ubisoft is in charge of UK cloud rights is a good idea? Well, it, it, as for a way of getting it finished, uh, probably, because as we can tell, uh, cloud gaming really isn't a thing. Maybe it's a thing 10 years from now. So to get the deal done, it's probably the best one that they could come up with. I doubt Ubisoft is going to, Suddenly being like, oh, by the way, uh, you know, Sony paid us for exclusivity for Call of Duty games streaming on their platform. I'm not necessarily sure that's something that would happen, but I mean, I guess we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. So let me uh, head over to Patreon, uh, get some of these questions from everybody. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's always it's always fun having Colt and Cog on. You know, I miss Jez because this would have been. Whew, man, what a show we would have had if Jez was here. Because I, I miss his, uh, you know, his his analytical feedback. Although sometimes Jez gets, you know, a little... <laughs> he gets... Uh, man, what's... what? He gets like... Okay, here we go. Am I, am I in my Patreon thing? I think so. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Did I sign up with my wrong email? I did. All right. This is the right email got to log in because Jez controls all the Patreon stuff. So apparently I logged in with a wrong email, but here we are. We have the right one now. And let's see, we have, all right, we got some questions. Exclusive question thread. Let me get to this. All right. Uh, All right, wait, where is this? Where's the question thread? Okay, here we go. I found it. All right. Mechagora says, as long as it's not Gaz. Well, what is wrong with Gaz? What is wrong with Septic Sauce? I love having Gaz on here because he always brings a different perspective. He's high energy. He's funny. Yeah, I understand. The sauce may not be for everybody as it's supposed to be like, um, you know, like a satire of the console war stuff. And Gaz can be pretty much 
raw and unfiltered. He'll tell you things you don't want to hear. Because let's be honest, there's a lot of people that, and I've experienced this myself with people that watch my show and my videos, that only want to hear the best news about Xbox. They don't want to hear any criticism. And if there's any criticism, they want it relegated to just two minutes. You, you, you talk about Redfall and how bad it is for two minutes, and then you, you move on, right? They don't want to hear any sort of things. Bec- and, then, and then when you do say it, they always say, what about Sony? What about Sony? It's like, who cares? We're not talking about Sony. This isn't a, a Sony thing. This is an Xbox thing, right? And Gaz can be pretty harsh on Xbox, but they also can be, you know, praise Xbox uh, just as, as, as well. But I know some people don't like that. Some people really don't like it when you critique Xbox for things they do things they've had done, and, you know, look, I don't expect everybody to like me either. I'm sure when I go on shows, people are like, oh, my God, Rand's here. I'm sure there are plenty of people that will be like, Rand, I don't like Rand. He's, he's boring, right, or whatever different sort of adjective you make up. You're obviously not going – everybody's not going to like you, you know. Uh, so I don't really I'm, – I'm sure there. Are people, Gaz has his fans. He clearly does. Um, but he's always welcome on my show. I mean, he's a bu- I talk to Gaz all the time, and I would love to have have him here today because Gaz would provide a different um, outlook than what me, Colt, or Cog were talking about, and that's always a valuable thing. Uh, we have Jot saying, how about that new controller? The series controller's ergonomics and the addition of haptics. It makes the DualSense look like weak old dog poop, hand pain-inducing carnal Carpal tunnel ass garbage. Whoa! Tell me, uh, <laughs> tell me what you really think uh, about that. Um, I'm, I kind of like the idea. Actually, really like the idea that they're doing something new with the controller mid gen. Although it kind of really puts in the spotlight of the beginning of this gen why they didn't do anything new with the controller. And it sort of seems like we. It sort of seems like oh, somebody did it better. So now we're, we're going to do this. It was kind of like their messaging before was, oh, we want you to use the old controllers and all that sort of stuff. And now halfway through the gen, they're going to be introducing a new controller and then probably having their first party games use the haptics. And those people who are going to want to buy the controller. So I guess you could sort of see it as like they're admitting that PlayStation did something uh, quite valuable and right, and that they're going to take the thing that they did right with the controller and put it in theirs, which is fine. I'm more than happy with haptics being on the controller. I think the haptics on the dual sense are the, are the best thing about that controller, even though it doesn't have symmetric, it doesn't have asymmetrical sticks. So yes, with the Xbox controller with haptics will be the superior controller by far because it won't have adaptive triggers and it won't have symmetrical stumps, thumbsticks. That's why no matter what, the PlayStation controller can never be better than the Xbox controller, simply because of the symmetrical thumbsticks. And you know I'm right when I say that. Uh, Lazar Wolf says, I'm sure you talked about all the leaks in depth already, so I'll ask, what is your favorite kind of cheese to put on a burger? I always put American on my American cheese on the burger. I, I always do. It's got to be, at least for me, it's got to be American. Uh, Elijah Vasquez, regarding the major Xbox leak, how different do you think the plans are for Xbox than what's shown besides the obvious delays due to the pandemic? Do you think we see more non-Bethesda games in addition to the plans? It's tough to say. I mean, Phil went on in his tweet and in his statement to say, like, you know, we, we'll share the updated plans or the real plans. Like, there was going to be significant changes, but I don't really think there'll be that significant changes. Um, and I think the Bethesda roadmap is probably the correct one. It's just that those games are sort of pushed out further. And he, I'm just like, I look at it, I'm like, look, we're getting a new Doom, it looks like. We're getting a three Indiana Jones games. I'm sad for the fact that we're not seemingly going to get a Wolfenstein. Uh, a new Dishonored is something I didn't ever thought we would see. But, like, yes, sign me up. And whatever uh, ZeniMax Online's got... Uh, I didn't think we'd see a Ghostwire Tokyo sequel, and I'm sure they're going to make a sequel to Hi-Fi Rush, considering how well that game did. So Bethesda's cooking. Bethesda's cooking. Um, it's just like, now we don't know what... That's the sort of thing here, is a lot of it is like, we sort of know what they're doing now, 
So when you look at like their next gen plans and their their consoles, it's sort of a known thing. There's no there's no surprises to be had, um, which is disappointing to a certain extent, because at least you know sometimes when you hear about these things, it's like oh there's a Series X digital, and it's like oh and you make just wonder like is it going to be upgraded? What sort of things are going to be there? Now you like legit know the whole kit and caboodle, so there's not there's no surprises. Like, we would have been, oh, a new controller with haptics. That would have been something you'd have been like, oh, shit. But now it's like, all right, you know what to expect, right? It's like it's like you found out your Christmas presents uh, a year, two years in advance. It's like, here's what we're getting you for Christmas, and that's what you're getting. Instead of there being like, well, I asked for this, and I asked for this, and I think I might get this. It's basically your parents telling you a year in advance is like, all right, this is what you're getting for Christmas in a year. So, like, you might think things change, and they might add gifts, or maybe take away gifts, or change some gifts, and then when you actually get to Christmas, it's basically just the same exact thing, and you're sort of just being like, oh, I guess, yeah, I guess nothing really did change. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the next-gen roadmap is the one that is more open to changing. I guess we'll, uh, we'll eventually see. Arash says, should Xbox pursue Nintendo if they become available? I think it makes too much sense not to, as each have strengths and weaknesses that complement each other. Am I the only one not feeling mad if this hypothetical constellation scenario does come to pass? It will only increase access to better games and better hardware, and I don't see how customers will be harmed in any way. Look, <clears throat> I'm all for Xbox getting more studios and publishers because, you know, I'm just that's just fine. Like I, I find a lot of the the talk of consolation in the industry to be just kind of just uh angry old old guys who don't like who is the one doing the acquiring uh but i do feel that xbox should not acquire nintendo even if they were available because you you you're talking about three console manufacturers and then xbox would take nintendo off the board to be two so already you're looking at severe regulatory oversight they would be look and if if you get ABK with how far in third place Xbox was being dominated by PlayStation and Nintendo and seeing the stuff that they were doing and and like how both the EU and the CMA were like well this you know cloud gaming we're concerned about that can you imagine if they got Nintendo they would have the same concerns but it would have the same concerns along the lines of also like this could be you, it's just it's too much you can't have mario and zelda and all this stuff and you especially couldn't have them in the cloud so if you're looking at it like now you'd be like they would have to sell the nintendo streaming rights probably to somebody else and yeah so i don't know i'm not i'm not a fan of one of the th- one of the console manufacturers going away because then it's just like just two and you can sort of i don't know raise prices and make things a little bit more difficult for consumers so I don't really think they should and I don't think they will because I mean you you j- they got Bethesda and they got ABK and they'll probably go after another publisher like Sega and at that point you you really can't get any more. Maybe it'd be a different story if they didn't get Bethesda or ABK and it was just like Nintendo and Nintendo wanted to sell which is the big thing. Nintendo clearly doesn't want to sell and they're not going to do a hostile takeover. And I don't really see a scenario of Nintendo ever wanting to sell. And I I also feel like it would be blocked anyways by all the regulators. The Japan regulator would probably wouldn't let it happen. So I think it's just a scenario that's, yeah, you know, if it ever was available, of course I would want it. Like, yeah, you know, if, uh, you know, if dating Taylor Swift was something that was on the cards, of course I'd take it. But it would never, ever happen in a million years, right? especially with how everything is is right now with how much uh crap they went through with ABK imagine if that was Nintendo they'd be going through so much more and i don't think it would i don't think it would end well i think it would end up blocked so and i think they know that but i get like i get people wanting Nintendo games on better hardware like i get people wanting Zelda off the switch and Metroids on hardware that can do 4k 60 instead of what it currently does like nintendo's always been constrained by their hardware 
Although it sounds like the Switch 2 might be better in that regard. Like the hardware might be a little bit more powerful. So we'll see. I mean, maybe maybe their their games will start to shine more than they already have. I mean, people bought the new Zelda game in droves and, you know, it ran at 30 frames, less than 30 frames and like whatever resolution and people didn't really seem to mind. So do people not really care about games? Do people not really care about power in that manner? I guess, I guess so. Uh, we have Silas saying, Greetings, Rand L. Adorable. Since Jez is gone offline and won't ever listen to this podcast, what do you like most about him and what annoys you the most about him? Oh, okay. Well, let's see. What, what do I like most about Jez? Uh, I like Jez is really funny. Like seriously, he he is really funny sometimes, and he has a really, really great grasp of the industry. Uh, so hearing him talk about certain subjects, he always approaches certain subjects differently than how I think about stuff because he like the way like even like how I play games is totally different than how Jez plays games, right? I play one game at a time to completion. Jez plays a whole smorgasbord of games that doesn't complete anything. We're like complete opposites. So he has a different viewpoint of how people play games versus me. And then when he talk about the subject matters, he always comes at it from a different angle that may never occur to me, right? So he's incredibly smart. He's incredibly funny. Um, the worst thing about him, let's see. I mean, he's British. You know what I mean? Like, how he pronounces certain words. They're always funny. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't, nothing really bothers me about jazz, you know, like it's, I love doing the show with them every single Friday. We've been doing it for six years at this point. It, I wouldn't do it with him if I didn't, didn't like him. So no, there's nothing that really bothers me about jazz other than the fact that he's British. You know what I mean? And I'm sure people are listening. It's like, wait a minute, I'm British. It's, it's just a jazz thing. Don't worry. I, I love everybody equally. Um, but yeah, sometimes I guess maybe like a small quibble would be, you know, when we do talk about the Patreon stuff, I would, we, we, we talked about maybe doing more shows. I would like to do more shows like, like, Hey, how about if we did two Xbox two plus one with guests a, a month plus an Xbox ultimate and you know, but it, his time's a little tied up. So I feel like maybe we could do more if Jez was less busy because he's managing editor of windows central, you know, but it's not, it's not a big deal whatsoever. Uh, Ryan says, to follow up on the great question from Silas, what do you think Jez likes most about you and what you, about you annoys Jez, if anything? Oh, I don't, I have no idea. What? Okay. Let me ask chat chat. Here we go. Here's a question for you guys. What is the thing that annoys you most about me? If you guys had, to, cause I don't know. I don't know. What's the most annoying thing about me. Um, so I'm going to let you decide chat. What is the most annoying thing about me? Uh, is that the question? Like, what is the most annoying thing about me? Oh, what is the thing you like about me the most and the thing that annoys you most about me? I'm going to ask you guys. Although I, su- I, su- I suppose I could ask Jez about this next week, right? Um, Supernova says, Randall snore. So I guess I'm boring. I put people to sleep. You're not the first person to say that. Uh, at all. And I, you know, some people say, you got a monotone voice or whatever. Shut the fuck up. Whatever. That's how I speak. Um, sleeping through the show. That happened one time. Maybe the fact that I, I like to read my bother jazz a bit. I don't know. I'll have to ask jazz, uh, this question when he comes back. My lack of love of Pokemon Raj. I mean, I, that could be, that could be something jazz has a problem with how I won't, uh, <laughs> I won't do like, like um, charity, right? I don't season my food. Yeah, that's a bad one. I don't like PlayStation. My PlayStation fanboy voice is is, is announced. It's, it's also funny. Okay, people like that. Your denial of scale bound existing. <laughs> what I hate the most is you have a higher gamer score than me. Oh, okay. Oh, you're a mouse. Says that doesn't annoy me, but I bet when you cut Jez off when he's in the middle of a long explanation, he gets miffed. Yeah, I'm sure he does. But sometimes Jez goes on for a long time that I'm kind of like, all right, I need to move this along, so I'll, I'll cut him off. Because you know, Jez does love to ramble. He'll ramble. I'll let him ramble about a lot of stuff until sometimes I feel like it's gone on too long and it's kind of, 
you know, I wanted to kind of get him to back focus because Jez does like to get off into tangents. One of the reasons why the show can be as long as it is sometimes. That's a good one. And uh, <laughs> I only play trending games. Hmm. I don't know about that. I think that's, yeah, I guess there are a lot of things for Jez. Your hipster only plays trending games. Eh. Rant's taste in food. Okay. Most annoying. Okay, no seasoning. Okay. Randall Community Game Night. I wish that was something we could put together. So, yeah, I'm sure. Nobody really likes to get cut off, I would imagine. And I, I, I do cut off Jez sometimes. But it's usually because either I have something really good to add on or because it's like, all right, we got to we gotta move this topic along. Because sometimes it's like, all right, we got we to keep on going. We can't sit on this subject for a while, so we're going to cut you off and we're going to end it. Uh, but, yeah, I'll ask Jez next week. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We got Governor Grimm. How much of Leak is still part of their plans and how much has been changed? Are they looking at another Xbox One generation if they go with Clyde Hob- Hybrid Console next gen? As an aside, Jez, you need to go on vacation more often now that the CMA's preliminary approval of ABK deal, the Xbox stand bursting, and Octopath Traveler 2 coming to Xbox. I can't help but think your being gone on vacation is anything but an omen. That's true. Although Xbox's TGS this year was was not as good as the one last year. And uh, we talked a little bit about that. How much has been changed? Too too early to tell. I mean, I don't I don't maybe the price of the refresh consoles. I, I I sort of feel like those are set in stone. I mean the the chart did say it was fully fun it was funded, so we know they're coming. Maybe the dates of the launch might be different. The only things that I can really see changing are maybe some of the next-gen plans because they're so far out. But uh, uh, honestly, I don't really think much changes. And I, I know that's what you're going to say to everybody being like, hey, guess what? You know, those are old plans. Uh, we have new plans. And, eh, you know, we'll see them eventually. And we'll obviously compare them. We'll have whenever they do announce next-gen and their plans, We'll ha- we have the old ones. So we'll see what was different and what changed and stuff. So, you know. I mean, I don't, I, I don't expect them to suddenly have a mid-gen upgrade, like, ready. You know what I mean? Like, I don't expect them to, like, within that time frame between now and then, that suddenly they decided they need a, a mid-gen upgrade with a 25 teraflop mid-gen upgrade Series X, X2 or something. I don't think we'll see something, like, that significant. But, I don't know. Uh, Billy the Beaver says, what is your favorite flavor of wing sauce? I mean, if I have to get wing sauce, I normally would eat my wings plain. It would be like honey barbecue sauce, I think, is the one I like the most. I, I would get that, but I don't like it sl- I don't like it all over the wings. I don't like it smothered. If anything, let me dip it, you know? I don't I don't like anything sort of smothered. Let me get, if I put ketchup, I put it on the side. Just, just let me dip my my wings. Uh, Batman Beyond said, "Hey guys, do you think ten million is an impressive number for Starfield across Xbox and PC, considering it's on Game Pass?" Yeah, I do. I think ten million is impressive. You, you got to also keep in mind it wasn't on last gen because I know the comparisons to Forza was Forza. I think did ten million a little bit faster, but Forza was also on Xbox One at a time where a lot of, a lot of people were still playing on Xbox One. You got to remember, Forza Horizon 5 came out in 2021. The new consoles had only been out a year. And there were supply constraints. Not everybody could get a brand new console. And, you know, with Xbox being like, hey, you buy Forza Horizon, uh, you can play it on last gen, you can play it on current gen. So there was probably a significant uh, amount of people playing Forza Horizon on last gen in 2021 than there is playing Starfield or wanting to play Starfield in 2023 as you know, Xbox series S has been readily available for a while. And the series X has been more available. So I would imagine like if Starfield was on the Xbox one, maybe it would have higher numbers, but I know, I think it's, I think it's impressive 10 million in two weeks for a brand new IP. I mean, it's impressive for any game. Um, now it's all about the sustainability offering the updates that people want getting that map in there, um, getting like the expansion out, getting the mod support in so people can just go back to Starfield and discover more and more things and just keep 
playing that game, uh, I think is what's important next. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, Jay Foley. Hey, Rand and random guest, which was Cog and Colt. You think we get a whole new dashboard and Xbox achievement system with the next gen console in 2028? I hope so. I mean, we've been rocking this dashboard for a while now. It's a little stale. I actually kind of like how PlayStation has a new dashboard every single gen, and we used to too. But I mean, Xbox's dashboard in the Xbox One was so bad, they iterated on that, I don't know how many times, five or six different times. And they did it on the 360 too. 360 came out with the blades, then you had like the new Xbox experience. They had like four different Xbox 360 dashboards. So it always felt like, things were changing and it was something new to see. And with the Xbox one having this, like, you know, lack of better term, but they wanted, um, compatibility. Maybe that's not the right word, or at least uh, the same visual language across everything. It sort of feels like, ah, eh, I'm not really playing anything new, but maybe they eventually get sick of it. It does seem like they're trying to refine it. All these sort of things they're doing. So maybe this is the one they stick with. I don't know, because it sort of matches the one from the Samsung uh, the Samsung app for xCloud and stuff. So you maybe in six years they, they have some new ideas and they can they can make it a little bit more flashy or something. But I do like it. I do like it changing because it gives I, – and I know um, that's kind of it's, – it's not really a thing, but it gives you that visual sense of something being new and different rather than like the same old – dashboard you've been experiencing for a while uh, omen says based on the leaks it sounds like there will be a ps5 pro release without any answer from the xbox team do you think you will buy the ps5 pro and if so do you think you'll play most of your multiplats and non-game pass titles on the ps5 pro instead um no i will not so i haven't really i would need to see what the ps5 pro is uh, look here's the thing I buy all my games on Xbox, right? I just bought Mortal Kombat 1 on Xbox, and I'm playing Solar Ash and Payday 3 right now. And there's really no way I would ever play those games on PlayStation. The only way I would ever play multiplats on PlayStation is if Xbox doesn't exist. Like, if Xbox went out of business tomorrow, yeah, that's where I would play. So, would I, if a PS5 Pro came out, would I play my third parties there? No, absolutely not. 0% chance that would happen. So, to me, I need to think about, all right, the only time I use my PlayStation is when an exclusive drops. Like, this year I turned it on to play Final Fantasy 16, and I turned it on to play Oxenfree 2. Haven't been turned on since. I will have it turned on again for Spider-Man 2. And then when Spider-Man 2 is over, that thing shut down until sometime next year. I don't think I'm going to play Helldivers. So until something interests me next year, whether it's from Sony themselves or a timed exclusive or whatever that I really want to play. But a PS5 Pro, that's the thing. It's like I got to judge for myself if spending $500 is worth it for a console uh, to only play a couple games a year when I already have a console. So it's like, do I need to spend more money to get better performance on games that are probably already going to have good performance? I don't know. I haven't really made up that decision. I mean, off the base of it, I would say no. I'm not really interested in the PS5 Pro because I'm sure the, the regular PS5 will be just fine. But then again, sometimes, you know, there was a moment there, I think, with... What was it? The Nintendo Switch OLED... That my, no, it wasn't the OLED. It was like, it was the ROG Ally that I almost bought. And I'm not even someone who plays, like, I'm not even someone who, who plays on the go like that. And then for, I got caught up in, in that, like, momentum and I was like, almost bought it. And I bought my Switch kind of the same way where it was like, ah, you know, so maybe I get caught up in the, the hype and the fervor. And it's like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy this thing. Um, but right now I would probably say no, but even if I did, no, I wouldn't play any, I wouldn't play any multiplats on the PS5 Pro. Absolutely not. 
Uh, Cheapman says, do you think Ori appearing in Party Animals means anything for the future of the Ori franchise? You know, I thought about that when it happened, Achievement. I was like, oh, wait, an Ori in Party Animals? Does this mean something? But a part of me thinks, like, no, they're just two characters that make sense for a game like Party Animals. Like, nice, big, and cuddly. You could throw them in there. Xbox owns the IP. Party Animals is going to get played a lot. So the crossover, I think, makes a lot of sense. I, I think it's more about the crossover making sense than about Ori having a future. And I, I've talked about it before on the show about how I feel about the future of the Ori franchise. I don't really think there needs to be an Ori game. Because if you do make an Ori 3, it has to be on the quality level of the first two. And the first game's like a 90-91. I know the Metacritic was sort of dragged down because of the launch issues. But if you're making a third one, it needs to be of that high caliber. And you don't really need one from a story perspective. Like, it wrapped everything up, and it gave you a nice emotional uh, ending to the series. So it's it's not like I, I, I... Like, when the first game ended, I was like, I need Ori 2. Give me the next game. When Ori 2 ended, I wasn't thinking, give me Ori 3. I felt satisfied that it was complete, and I they got such an uh, emotional ending from it. So no, I mean... That's that's the thing about this. It's like, that's probably their best game they released last gen. And to go back to that well, you got to find a developer who can can do that game justice. And I don't I don't know. I mean, now that the Moon's not going to work on it, you know, because Moon's has those those issues. So I kind of don't want it to come back. Even though I would like, if they did bring it back, I'd be like, yes, Ori's here. But part of me is just like, no, don't don't ruin it. Like it ended perfectly. You don't need to go to the well on this. Uh, we have O9C Mine saying, with the great news about the UK finally, provisionally, approving ABK, what do you think will be Microsoft's plans w- with ABK once they acquire them, short term and long term? Well, the short term will be probably new back and pad titles, right? Games like maybe Singularity. Or a batch of games that they could do back and pat now that they would have the licenses. So that would be something short term. Another thing short term will be games that go into Game Pass. Right? We know there's a huge catalog of games. From the Tony Hawk games to like Diablo games to the Spyro games to the Crash games to the Guitar Hero games. Um, although I don't think those... Well, to the to the, you know, all those games... And if you look what they did with Bethesda, a whole bunch of them dropped in Game Pass right away. I could see a similar scenario. Although I could see also Microsoft maybe not releasing everything or dropping everything on Game Pass, but who's to say? So in the short term, it'll be, here's some new back and pat stuff, and here's a whole bunch of games in Game Pass. Maybe they have a round table. Maybe they have some trailers where it's, you know, like welcoming the teams of ABK to Xbox. I'm sure they'll do some stuff because it's a mega uh, acquisition. Long term's a, di- a, a different kind of thing because long term you have these franchises like Overwatch 2 that need to sort of be, you need to care for them. Diablo 4 has been through a rough patch. Uh, people have like left the game. You need to make sure that that's on the right track. Um, Call of Duty, you need to decide if you're still going yearly or are you going to skip a year and go every other year to give your developers more time? Um, you also need to decide, Hey, is anybody else going to be making other games? Is toys for Bob. Can you go make some other stuff? You need to decide, Oh, you know what some of these support studios are going to do. Right. Um, because, You know, I mean, when you look at it from that perspective of of the console side, um, you know, the mobile stuff is a little bit different. Long term, it's going to be about Call of Duty and and uh, you know what the health of that franchise. You just spent seventy billion dollars. You need to make sure that it's it doesn't lose players. It doesn't the revenue doesn't decrease. You need you you know and like management. You need to put the right people in the management. That'll be a short-term thing, but also a long-term thing because Bobby Kotick's probably going to be gone, right? And in any other scenario with uh, an acquisition like this, somebody is going to stay on 
and kind of guide and inform the person who would then be, you know, in charge behind them about everything. But Bobby Kotick's so toxic that he might be gone immediately. So you're going to have, you know, management. You might have some management issues you're going to have to work through. Um, and, and that might be a problem that you're going to have to address. You know, it's going to be, it's not going to be easy for them, right? It's just, it's going to be a lot of hard work, probably a lot of sleepless nights. I mean, we've already seen how Redfall and Xbox not really doing anything with that, how that really impacted Xbox because of how badly it was received. And like, oh, we should have gotten involved, you know, like, oh, we, we should have done this and we should have done that. Like the growing pains that you get from taking on another publisher and you're going to have that stuff too with ABK, but even bigger because it's, it's so big. So there's going to be struggles, you know? And, uh, you know, but as a consumer, it's kind of just like, what am I going to be getting right away? Back and pack games, game pass, you know, uh, new games coming game call of duty on game pass is going to be massive and things like that. So it is uh, definitely going to be an interesting few years, uh, for that stuff. We have Lee Sanders saying, um, now that the ABK is nearly done realistically, how long do you think Xbox needs to wait before they can save crystal dynamics? See, it was like 10 people that was laid off. They're working on Tomb Raider for Amazon and perfect dark for Xbox. So I think they're probably safe for any more layoffs. And Eidos Montreal, I think, is working on Fable. Um, but I do think those games need to be salvaged from Embracer. So the sooner, the better. I don't know how long it takes, but they need to get those teams. Uh, Diego, I hope the refresh doesn't come out at the same price as the launch Series X console. If the only significant difference is the new controller, then I'd rather they save the controller when the next gen... Xbox consoles come out so the refresh could be cheaper. I don't know. What do you think? Love the show. Yeah, I'm not like... Like I said, I, I was... I sort of wasn't blown away by their refresh idea. Like, okay, we're selling the same console for the same price as we did four years ago and you get a, an extra one terabyte of storage and, like, better Bluetooth and better Wi-Fi. I mean, it seems a little safe to me, especially when your competitor might be putting out a upgraded system for the same price i, I don't know it, it wasn't something that I, I that immediately like wowed me um the controller though is i think quite exciting so i'm happy that they're not i'm happy they're not waiting for next gen i'm happy it's actually would be coming out uh next year but yeah like i don't know the refresh stuff really didn't i don't know it didn't really do anything for me um, their next gen plans would be what's interesting. And yeah, you can talk about the hybrid console all you want. And maybe there is some interesting applications and things they can do with that. I mean, it's just that, you know, we're six years, five years away from uh, any of that stuff. And it wasn't really locked down. Um, but yeah, for just for the refreshes, I was kind of like, eh, I mean, I don't really care about the series S anyways. It would be the series X, but uh, even looking at my own, it's like, would I want to buy it? it? You know, having the system, I guess, yeah, you could say, well, you could trade it in. I could, I could probably get, I don't know, $300 for the Series X. So I would only have to spend $200 on the refresh. It's got two terabytes extra storage, so I can store more games on there. But storage isn't really an issue, so I have the storage expansion. So it's like, do I really need it? It's not really like it's Wi-Fi is really an issue, even though... I have my, my console on Wi-Fi. The games still download really fast. And I get about 300 through Wi-Fi. So that's not really an issue. So it's like, what do I really need? I just need the controller realistically. But I mean, like I said, with the PS5 Pro, you know, maybe I get rolled up into the hype. Maybe I see it and it looks really cool. Um, and I'd be like, I just need to get this and I just buy it. I don't know. But off off the off off seeing it the first time i i wasn't really yeah it didn't really impress me uh we got kraken 56 he says hey guys i remember the dark days in 2017 when it felt like there was no hope for the future to get to where xbox is now it doesn't feel real you see a lot of people scared and crying now that xbox is not a laughing stock 
I can't imagine the next showcase amount of content. It feels like already started with the last showcase. Do you guys ever think Xbox could turn around like this, or did you think it was more likely the brand would die? I mean, I was scared at one point. You could ask Tim, 2016, 2017. It wasn't sounding good. I mean, Z Huge put out that infamous tweet about how, like, the money's dried up and Xbox doesn't have a blank check to help the division anymore. Like, Microsoft's cut them off. And, like, when you saw that year where it was just Halo Wars 2 and Forza Motorsport 7 and, you know, like, Lucky's Tale and Scalebound's getting canceled and Fable Legends is getting canceled and they're shutting down a, a, a fabled studio like Lionhead. Um, you're just kind of, like, looking at it like, wow, this is not good. You know, the Xbox One was getting trounced in sales from the PS4. It really did seem like Xbox was on its way out. And then suddenly, somehow, like Phil convinced them not to. He's on the leadership team. They buy, a, you know, five studios in 2018. Uh, actually, I think it was like six because they ended up, No, then five, seven studios in 2018 because then two at XO. They buy Double Fine in 2019. You launched a new console and the Series X sounds great, Right. And then all of a sudden, oh my God, we're buying Bethesda. And it's like, it was really the Bethesda thing that really was like eye-opening to me. It was like, oh, okay, you really in this, right? Like, it was like Bethesda was the one that sort of changed. Like, oh, they're real. They know they need this stuff. And it wasn't anything I could imagine in 2016 or 2017 or even 2018 for that matter. I didn't really think Xbox was going to do that. I mean, buy a whole ass publisher like that, you know, especially with how, you know, uh, the disparity between income between Sony, Nintendo, and, and Xbox at the time, it was just like, yeah, I'm sure they'll buy some individual studios, but a publisher? And then they, they rocked everybody's world with ABK, which signified like, no, we're in this for good. $70 billion? This is like, we're staying here. We're, we're, we, have, we have designs on being the industry leader. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like, you talk about where we were to where we are. I mean, I couldn't... I couldn't have predicted this. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I thought it was more likely the brand would sort of slowly fade into obscurity. And it's the, you know, the opposite has happened. Now you have people celebrating Phil Spencer's quotes about, hey, maybe we, m we might need to leave the business right? Celebrating that. And then the next day screaming at the top of their lungs about how Xbox is a monopoly. I like don't get the bipolarness of one day being like, Xbox is getting out of the business. Yes. Gaming is saved to the next day being like, God damn it. This can't be allowed. Xbox is a monopoly. It's like, make up your minds. What is it? Are they leaving the business or are they monopoly? I don't understand. You know what I mean? And it, some of that stuff is just funny to me. And uh, Tyler says, uh, Colin Moriarty reacted to the Xbox lease today by saying that they clearly show that Game Pass is unsustainable and they show that Xbox is a soulless company who wants to monopolize the industry. I loved your recent conversation with Colin. I was wondering if there's a possibility of a round two. Oh, yeah, I'm sure we'll have Colin on uh, at another point in time, maybe like next year at some point. There is a lot to talk about, um, you know, with, with things after the ABK deal and all this sort of stuff. I mean, I disagree with uh with Colin about Xbox is a soulless company because I know the people at Xbox and they're definitely not soulless. Um, you know, a lot of people read Phil's interview or Phil's email with Nintendo and they're like, "Oh my God, how could he say that?" But it's like you actually read the email. He's saying like, "No," he's saying like, "Yeah, good job, but no." Uh, but people don't understand that, and I don't know. I the whole Game Pass thing. I don't see the unsustainability of it. So, I mean, whatever. I disagree with Colin. He can have his own takes on stuff. And I enjoyed the conversation we had with him uh, very much. But I disagree with a lot of his points, you know. But he's free to make them. But anyways, that is that is all the Patreon questions. So let me, uh, let me go back to chat. Are people still talking about what they like or dislike about me? Uh... Nintendo Don the Otaku says you sent a a late Patreon question. Hold on, let me let me go see. Let me go see cuz uh it wasn't there, so I got to refresh it. All right, let me go back to Patreon. Uh the things I do for you. 
Let me let me load this back up. All right, should be at the bottom of the list, right? I'm, I wonder if it's a question about Nintendo. Uh, let's see, load more. All right, here we go. Don, 2024 is already looking great, but there are a lot of unknown, a lot of unknowns that feel like they could make it in the next year as well. Which announced games from the list do you think will make it into 2024? Indiana Jones, Contraband, State of Decay 3, Perfect Dark, Everwild, Kojima's Games, People Can Fly Game, Project Mara, Project Dragon, P- Project Tatanka, Project Sh- Shaolin, Project Suerte, 1 vs. 100 is Scalebound. You want me to be realistic, Don? Um... I would say out of these, Project Tatanka is maybe the only one I could see for 2024. I don't think, in, even though Indiana Jones was supposed to be 2022 and Todd did say we'd see it next year, he also said like the game was halfway done. So I don't think, unless you're talking about will we see these games this year or were they released next year? If we're talking about were they released next year, I don't think any of these release except for maybe Tataka. I think one versus 100 is dead. I don't know if Project Suerte is even a thing anymore. Uh, we already know from IO that Project Dragon Fantasy is 2025 or later. There's no way Project Mara is coming out in 2024 because that's when, you know, Hellblade's coming out. They're not releasing two games. People Can Fly's game just started. There's no way that's coming out. Kojima's game, I don't think so. Everwild, no way. Perfect Dark, nope. That's 2025, I think. State of Decay 3, no. Contraband, maybe. Indiana Jones, no. So maybe one of those. The rest are later, if I had to, if I had to guess. So I, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a nice list. Uh, Munter says, does, plan, does Jez plan to propose to his girlfriend? I don't know. He didn't tell me. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he is or not. Um, but I mean, why else would you go, why else would you go all the way there? Right. Why would you go on vacation there? So maybe, maybe you did. Uh, yeah. So I think that's, uh, I think that's, that's it. You know, we had a nice long show here. I know we didn't talk about everything, but we got to keep it, you know, within, within time limit. Right. And, uh, I know we're coming up to essentially what is, uh, the four hour mark. Cause I usually like to keep it with within four hours, but you know, I'm sure jazz, I'm sure we'll talk about this more next week. Cause jazz will have his own takes and maybe he'll, he'll, he'll think about it from a different angle. We didn't talk about, but I love having Cognito and Colt on. It's a blast when they always come through. I talk to them pretty much almost every single day, both of them, whether it's on Xbox or just chilling, talking about stuff on the phone, you know, about life and everything in general. So yeah, I mean, what a week, you know, uh, next gen plans, consoles, uh, all this inside baseball, Bethesda games. And then to wrap it all up with ABK get, getting pre-approved, pre, blah, 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 pre-approved, pre-approved. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're coming to the end guys. We're coming to the end of the saga that is ABK. And then it's all about, you know, because what matters most to me is the games. I've always said that. Games matter most. And to see the Bethesda list and to see the first party games from Xbox, considering, you know, we all lived through a time during the early Xbox One when the games they put out weren't very... Uh, no, Munter, I just, I just read your super chat. I, I, you said if he was proposing to his girlfriend, um, I said, I didn't know. So I just, I literally just read it. Uh, but yeah, uh, Jez comes back on Thursday. So we should have a show on Friday with Jez. Everything should be back to normal. And I want to thank everybody for being here. Make sure you hit the like button. If you haven't already subscribe, we're almost to hundred K it's almost there. And once we do it 100K, I'm going to start, you know, looking at cameras because we will have an Xbox Two on camera to see how that goes. That's 100% happening. As much as I don't want to, I said it would happen. So I'll have to start researching which cameras will be the best and 
all that sort of good stuff. And maybe we'll make the switch or maybe I'll be on camera for my videos. Either way, uh, you know, it's, it's all very exciting. I never thought it would happen. And maybe if I have a hundred K, maybe if I had a hundred K, I'll do a Q and a stream. I don't know. Uh, Zach Riley says, give us prediction for the date you think it will close. I think it'll close. Well, I think that they'll approve it that week of the sixth, but I don't think they'll wait to that Friday. I think they'll close it. Uh, let me look at the uh, let me look at the calendar. I think they will close it October 9th, I think is when they'll Xbox will close it. Like even if you assume they approve it on the 6th, I think they won't they won't close it until the following Monday. So that'll be Monday the 9th. And then maybe they do some sort of, you know, round table discussion or stuff cuz they have until the 18th is when I think the uh the extension is up so it'll be around then but either way thank you guys so much for being here love you all hope you have a great west a uh, great west uh, I can't speak now <laughs> a great rest of the weekend and I'll uh, see you I don't know maybe for a 100k celebratory stream uh, if we hit it this week uh, but definitely for Xbox Two on Friday with Jez. So, uh, yeah, take care, guys. Keep it gaming, and we'll see you later. <laughs>